the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Hallelujah. Say after me, I am an ambassador, a representative of the kingdom. Hallelujah. And so from Genesis chapter 3 until um, Matthew chapter 1, the coming of Jesus, it was the kingdom lost. You can summarize everything. The kingdom was lost. Hallelujah. It was not God's original design for the nation of Israel to have kings. He desired their king. It's out of their strong heart and they were stiff-necked people. Hallelujah. And so he told Samuel to go and anoint Saul and then David and all the kings that followed it was an attempt to preserve the structure of kingdom so that when Jesus came into the scene it would not be a strange thing hallelujah so the nation of Israel understood the concept of kingdom and then Jesus showed up John 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God hallelujah and when Jesus stepped upon the planet, he began to speak about the kingdom. Hallelujah. Started talking about the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven is like unto this. The kingdom of God is like unto this. He began to liken the kingdom to many things. And all through his work on earth, he was bringing people into an understanding of the structure of his kingdom. When he showed love, it was a manifestation of the love of the father when he walked miracles signs and wonders it was a demonstration of the superiority of his kingdom and then he began to introduce the disciples to the governor in chapter 15 and 16 he began to speak to them about one he called the paracletus the comforter the standby the advocate the helper the strengthener the guide the holy spirit hallelujah and I did tell us that Jesus, for our sake, he came to restore the kingdom. Hear me. The primary purpose of Jesus was not to come and take us to heaven. Don't stone me yet. It's a teaching. Hallelujah. The primary purpose of Jesus was to restore the kingdom. To restore the kingdom. That's why Revelation chapter 5 verse 10 says, We have been made unto our God a kingdom of priests, and we shall rule in this life, in this earth hallelujah and jesus began to suffer as an exchange all that he was doing was in exchange to restore the kingdom he was beaten we explained briefly the passion of the christ how that he went through everything he went through to restore the kingdom hallelujah then he said i will give you the keys of the kingdom he said whatever you bind on earth is what would have been bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth is what would have been lost in heaven he gave us the keys of the kingdom revelations chapter one says i am he that was dead and now is alive and i hold the keys hallelujah and so the entire scope of matthew to john was the redemption as we call it but then it was the restoration of the kingdom are you following me now from acts chapter one down onto jude is a manifestation of kings a manifestation of those who have now embraced the kingdom and now the bible begins to give us the the historical work of these people who have embraced the kingdom and the advancement of the kingdom and then paul begins to write in his epistles teaching us the precepts of the kingdom life talked about several issues issues that governed the holy spirit our ministry in church leadership marriage and all kinds of things within the context of the kingdom 
and then the bible ends in the book of revelation by giving us an entire scope of the king the entire book of revelation is a prophetic book that reveals christ from chapter 1 to chapter 22 hallelujah and then the bible beautifully ends in chapter 22 with the beginning of a new age lets us know that death hell and the grave were at that time casted into the lake of fire and then the king comes back to a new earth for those of you who are looking forward to running to heaven we are not staying very long here we are coming back to a beautiful city where he will be king of kings and lord of lords and we will reign and rule with him and that begins a new age the word eternity doesn't mean an endless span of time it means a summation of different ages are you following me now right now we're in what we call the church age after the church age there are certain ages a judgment and tribulation and all of that by the way let me encourage you that when the tribulation starts we will not be here on the earth that's a great message of comfort for many of you who have watched all kinds of scary films i'll tell you two reasons number one the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it the church represents the light of the kingdom here on earth darkness cannot manifest until light gives way hallelujah thank you jesus let's continue revelations chapter 11 lord let your word be strong in our hearts God is reorienting us so that we understand that Christianity is a kingdom system. It's not just a religion like many others. Are you listening to me? Many of us think, okay, it's just a religion and then one day, one day, something will happen, I will die. No, 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 no. And to equip us to be relevant. Revelations 11 verse 15, if you are there, say amen. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdom some versions add s the kingdom of this world is become the kingdom of our lord and of his christ and he shall reign forever and ever interesting scripture it says the seventh angel is it possible to get this on amplified the seventh angel okay I like the rendition in Amplified. The seven angels sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdom, the systems of this world, the word world here is the Greek word cosmos, the social system of the world. He said the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever tonight we'll be continuing in this series we have a lot to cover wherever we can stop let your heart be open hallelujah i'll be talking on kingdom advancement it's a continuation of the series kingdom advancement advancing the frontiers of the kingdom we stopped last week by helping us understand that jesus came to restore the kingdom say after me jesus christ came to restore the kingdom and he did restore the kingdom say one more time jesus christ came to restore the kingdom hallelujah and not just to restore the kingdom but to restore the citizens of that kingdom hallelujah that's why he died that's why he went through everything he went through jesus christ bled and he cried he wept was beaten by cruel and wicked people he went through all of these things to restore the kingdom life unto us hallelujah and the next step when you now understand that the kingdom has been restored the next step is to receive the kingdom hallelujah say after me the next step is to receive the kingdom how do you receive the kingdom by embracing the king of that kingdom hallelujah that's what we call being born again hallelujah being born again is simply coming to a point where you experientially accept the message of the king and you allow yourself to now subscribe to the government of that kingdom so when we talk about the new birth experience or what we call born again we're not just talking about some ambiguous thing 
we are talking about agreeing to come under the governing authority of that king so that you become a true citizen of that kingdom hallelujah that's why you come up and say lord jesus i believe you died for me i believe you rose again for me and he said i declare that you are lord of my life hallelujah lord of my life you are the king i choose to submit to your governing authority thereby becoming a bona fide citizen of your kingdom and every time you make that decision as a proof he sends the governor of the kingdom into your life it is such that the governor of the kingdom doesn't just live around us and walk with us but he can live in us hallelujah the holy spirit living in you is proof that you have been accepted as the citizen of that kingdom hallelujah hallelujah are you following me now very very important so you receive the kingdom you embrace the king and his lordship and authority over your life because he that told by reason of the fallen nature all of us by default submitted in adam to the governing authority of satan hallelujah that's why the bible makes us to understand that we have been translated from the kingdom so it is a kingdom the kingdom of darkness into another kingdom he calls it the kingdom of god's dear son so when you get born again that's what happens in the realm of the spirit a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son and the moment that happens to you the governor of the kingdom is sent into your life hallelujah as a non-believer the holy spirit who is the governor of this kingdom has a primary ministry of convicting you of sin of righteousness and of judgment john chapter 16 tells us he said when he the spirit of truth is come he will convict you of sin of righteousness and of judgment when you now become or enter listen let me tell you something friends getting born again is not all it's just the beginning are you following me now there are so many believers who think that all there is to the christian life or the kingdom life i love to call it is just to get born again and so we get born again there are so many people that get born again and we leave them at the gates of the kingdom they don't know what else to do and they come and say okay so now what am i supposed to do and we say well keep keep praying fast once in a while read your bible and hope that one day the trumpet will blow and the people cannot understand after six months they are caught up with boredom and they cannot understand what kind of system this is hallelujah and they come and they say well i've been born again i say who has not been born again let's continue being born again just remain born again hallelujah but there's more to the kingdom life than just getting born again hallelujah your being born again is only the entrance to the kingdom say after me the entrance to the kingdom it's like when you're, you you get born again you are given your admission letter into the kingdom hallelujah and the moment you get born again there are two things you get familiar with number one is the constitution of the kingdom what we call the bible the bible is the constitution of the kingdom inspired by the governor himself on behalf of the king hallelujah brought to teach and to train the citizens of the kingdom to give them the mindset of the priorities the culture the value the nature hallelujah in this constitution you get to understand the character of your king you get to understand his desire his project his agenda that's what the bible is all about the bible is not just a book for deliverance it's a book that gives you an orientation about the king and his life and his character hallelujah so when you begin to study the bible you begin to understand the nature and the character of the king you understand that this is how he operates we begin to understand that our king is a king of love that the law of the kingdom we live in is the law of love are you following me now we begin to understand these things and then we also begin to enjoy the ministry of the governor the one we call the holy spirit the bible says that when he the spirit of truth is come he said he will guide you into all truth he will begin to expound to you the ways of the kingdom communicating unto you the values of the kingdom 
hallelujah he will first and foremost work on your mindset say after me mindset when he works upon your mindset you come to a point of alignment to the ways and the patterns of the kingdom at first you will go through a lot of conflict the bible makes us understand in galatians chapter 5 from verse 16 it tells us to walk in the spirit so that we will not desire will not gratify the desires of the flesh he said for the spirit lusted after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit and both of them are consistently in conflict because they represent the manifestation of two kingdoms are you following me now and so when god begins to introduce you to his system it's usually challenging at first why because it will mean you laying down your ideology and your mindset are you following me now the world system is built upon greed and fear and terror and all of these things and hitherto our lives have been bounded by fear and greed and selfishness but when you come into the kingdom system the governor of the kingdom through the constitution begins to explain to you the modus operandi of the kingdom then you begin to see in the constitution of the kingdom that there is he that scattered and yet increased there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty and is antagonistic to the ways of the world hallelujah and the king is such a loving king that he does not force you to do anything he allows your will to come into play so you can choose how far you truly will become the citizen of the kingdom and to represent him and it is given unto the governor to empower as many obedient citizens so that they can prove to the world that they are true citizens of the kingdom that's what we call the anointing the anointing is god's authorization upon your life validating that you are a true citizen of the kingdom hallelujah praise god and so we receive the kingdom by embracing the king when you get born again you receive the kingdom into your life into your heart you receive the governor of the kingdom the one who represents the parliament of heaven here on earth so earth is a colony of heaven and according to god's design and desire he wants that it will happen here in the earth as it is in the heavens and so it's the primary responsibility of the governor to search the mind of the father and find out what it is and to communicate it to the citizens of that kingdom are you getting blessed it's a total paradigm shift from what is being taught in church and let me tell you something everything you ever have and everything you ever become if it does not have its bearing around the kingdom it will kill you that's why we have a lot of rich people who are liabilities to the kingdom because they do not understand the message and the character of the king are you following me now and so you get to meet the governor of the kingdom the holy spirit and god designed it in such a way that the moment you are born again your spirit is capable of hearing and recognizing the voice of the governor he said my sheep hear my voice he didn't say they are trying to my sheep hear my voice hallelujah for many believers when we get born again then for those that are pentecostals we move a step further we get filled with the holy ghost then you fall under the anointing ba -ba 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 -ba. you just turn and then you get born again and then many people just stop there so what is it about praying in tongues and just moving and then they say just keep praying there's a real devil in this kingdom just keep praying and the person says okay so i'm praying in tongues and he's just praying ba -ba 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 -ba. what is the prayer to what end hallelujah to what end is our bible study to what end is let, let me tell you something if we do not understand our goal and our purpose our spiritual investments will be a burden that's why for many people prayer is a burden for many people the study of god's word is a burden because we don't know to what end it's like a student reading without knowing what he's going to do hallelujah every time you read you understand there is an exam that goal encourages you to read whether or not you are ready to are you following me now when we understand the agenda of the kingdom and the concept of the king it gives us the impetus to want to get everything that the king has for us hallelujah 
I want you to understand that the king has an agenda. Say after me, the king has an agenda. And what is the agenda of the king and the kingdom? As I announce this, you check your life. If you are not directly supporting this agenda, you are called a rebel. So after this announcement, there will be two straight lines drawn in this meeting. Those who are actively supporting the advancement of the kingdom and those who are becoming liabilities to the king. And you are going to hear it very, very clearly. Are you ready to write the agenda of the kingdom? Very simple. The king has an agenda. What is his agenda? The agenda of the king for this season. is that the governing influence of his kingdom be replicated across the earth the governing influence instead of the increase of his kingdom and his peace there shall be no end the governing influence his character his nature his culture be reproduced across the entire globe hallelujah that's what we call kingdom advancement promoting the character the nature the culture the values of the king and the kingdom that we represent hallelujah and this first occurs in the hearts of men hallelujah the method is to first establish the kingdom in the hearts of men that's what we call soul winning i follow me now but that's only step one to establish the kingdom in the hearts of men to bring them to a point where they like us will subscribe to the government of this king by laying down their lives and saying take over my life and then number two to begin to infiltrate the systems of the world with the values the culture of the king that's what we are going to be discussing kingdom advancement so what is kingdom advancement the promoting of god's agenda the agenda of the king every one of us has a part to play in that ultimate promotion that's what we call purpose are you following me now your purpose on earth is your role the part you have to play to promote this universal agenda Thank you, Jesus. This is the current agenda of the king. That we partner with the governor of the king. Having been taught the values, the culture, the lifestyle. And you see, God, does, God cannot send you. The king cannot send you to represent him until he gives you a message. Until he schools you. Are you listening to me? You must become a true citizen of the kingdom before you are allowed to go and reproduce that life that's why when god calls a man he builds that man then he sends the man that's what koinonia is all about hallelujah right now god is giving us the mindset of his kingdom helping us to understand his ways his operation bringing us into intimacy with the governor of this kingdom the holy spirit the holy spirit is not a pentecostal phenomenon many charismatics and pentecostals have abused him and reduced him to tongues he's the governor of the kingdom it's beyond tongues and prophecy and falling down and standing up are you following me now he's the one who gives us direction he's the captain the one who is overseeing the progress of this kingdom advancement so we have a responsibility to partner with the governor to bring many under the rule of the king that's what we call soul winning so soul winning for many people and unfortunately for many denominations has just been a strategy to add to membership hallelujah so for many denominations what we are interested in is not to have many citizens of the kingdom but to have many members of our churches so you see someone who is born again he tells you we are in the same kingdom. he said no way no way if you are not under my denomination you don't belong to the kingdom interesting that's the nonsense that is going all around God is not teaching us denomination and dogma. He's teaching us kingdom. Are you following me now? That the most important thing, all of the denominations are only prophetic platforms. Hallelujah. When we understand this, we'll stop discriminating ourselves. Because I wonder what we are going to do in heaven. That big table in the last supper, there's only one table. The Bible doesn't say there are many so you better love your neighbor 
because if your seat mate belongs to let's continue hallelujah and then to replicate the life and the culture of the king say after me the life and the culture of the king let me have one Yoruba person, one Igbo person, and then one Northern. And quickly, quickly, three people. Let's do that quickly, quickly. Yoruba, Igbo. Please come, come up, three of you. No, no, no. Hallelujah. Erin is from Kaduna State. She's from the East. And Ejimi is from the what? West now listen listen all of these geographical locations have certain things are you following me now they have a common language they have a common culture they have values is that correct when a yoruba person especially a, a well it, it happens with everybody really but especially the ladies want to greet what happens they prostrate is their culture are you following me so you can see them manifesting their culture and it tells you where they are coming from is that correct when you hear them talking and they say hey, share and all of that you know that you can't mistake in that and say it's full and hallelujah are you listening to me and then for the ebos they have i we had a sumptuous meal it reminds me of a sumptuous meal to the glory of god that we had on sunday in pastor williams house appreciate them you don't know what i appreciate them <laughs> hallelujah i ate a very delicious soup called in salah see that that's the benefit of kingdom <laughs> hallelujah now she comes from the east and they have their culture their way of life and their language are you following me now he comes from the north hallelujah and we have our way of life praise God and now when you see these three they are ambassadors of their culture is that correct everywhere they go when you see someone at you are in washington for instance and you're going to the airport i see someone just proceed ah are you a shay and then you just greet you know you just bow here and all of that i say are you a yoruba that's nice it connects you are you following me now please i'm trying to communicate a message i hope you understand what i'm saying so as citizens of the kingdom we have a culture that the world should recognize instantly are you listening to me when you see a yoruba person you know instantly when you see an Igbo person even if a yoruba person wears kaftan his culture will betray the kaftan he's wearing very quickly you just know this is a yoruba person hallelujah are you following me now how come there are many christians and there are few kingdom citizens it tells you that there is an understanding of the culture of the kingdom that we do not have we have many believers across many churches and many christians but the world is still contending whether jesus is truly king that means that the citizens of the kingdom are just doing religion and doing christianity and have not come to a point where the world can see and let me tell you the world is not supposed to see different we are representing different kingdoms and people ask i say who are you christian who are you christian they say how come two of you seem to be conflicting are you are you following me that's why we are taking this teaching because that's how the church will beam as the light to the world the bible says that there are certain traits and signs that characterize citizens that belong to that kingdom there will be something when you in bible and, and in ancient time when you saw a jew you would know instantly by their manner of worship hallelujah they are dressing their language and everything they were revealing that they were Jews. God bless you. Please sit down. Hallelujah. So our job is to first imbibe and embrace the culture. Now the word culture is not a demonic word. I know that um, in our Nigerian and African context, I know that there are many wrong things with many cultures. All right. There are very healthy sides of culture, respect, love for God. But there are many unhealthy aspects of culture idol worship and so on and so forth allegiance to other gods and certain unhealthy practices hallelujah 
but then the kingdom of God has a culture that's why we sing the song your kingdom reigns you get the song now your kingdom reigns then we say above all that means there are other types of kingdoms but we're saying Lord we choose to bring your kingdom above hallelujah so we say Lord your kingdom reigns your governing influence is superior to every other kingdom in my life so that when you see me before you call me a Yoruba person you should first call me a kingdom citizen if your earthly culture is superior to your kingdom culture then you are not a true representative of the kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement so you first receive the kingdom and then you are taught by the governor of the kingdom you are equipped he trains you hallelujah and there are four principal ways to replicate this kingdom hallelujah kingdom advancement is a perfect blend of four things number one the character of the kingdom character you see that we teach about character there's no time in the church age where we need to talk about character than now we have so many anointed people anointed from head to toe who lack the character of the kingdom and our lifestyle and our character betray what we attempt to portray our praying in tongues is corrupted by a character that is not consistent with the king that we have that's why we emphasize character one way that the world will see and know that we are true kingdom citizens is by the manifestation of the character of the king galatians uh, 5 verse 22 gives us a list of what we know as the fruit of the spirit bible calls it love joy peace patience gentleness faithfulness self-control he said against this there is no law and so any citizen of the kingdom who stays enough with the governor will find himself manifesting this character suddenly you find out that you step into a system where there is hate and what comes out of you is the love of where there is sadness i love a beautiful song that says lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your love increase hallelujah he said lord make us instruments are you following me now so when you step into a place where there is bitterness you manifest the joy of the spirit so when people see you going through the same thing with them while they are languishing and complaining they see you laughing and you're just saying lord you are faithful and they say i cannot understand what is this you just loved lost a loved one and instead of you to be insulting god and talking say lord i love you i love you now and they cannot understand i love you tomorrow i love you forever you just hear a bad report from the doctor and instead of panicking you say no there's a light in my soul in spite of all the darkness that surrounds me and this light that i see only comes alive every time i hear your voice and people begin to note your life for behaving strange they say that's what they saw in jesus christ the moment jesus walked they say who is this the way he's teaching his way of life they saw him with unbelievers and instead of castigating them he was showing them love they said what kind of person is this he began to reveal the superiority and the, a foreign culture only comes alive every time i hear your voice. number two the manifestation of the anointing is one way we advance the kingdom because although we are in the world we are not of the world the world cosmos we call it the social system 
Hallelujah. The social system. Satan being the God of this world. The Bible calls him in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. The prince of the power of the air. The spirit that walketh in the sons of disobedience. That's the characteristic of those who are outside the kingdom. Disobedience and rebellion. Hallelujah. In the world system, they hail you for disobeying. Hallelujah. As guys, when you disobey people, disobey parents, disobey authority, they say, man. And you're like, hey, you just touch your head. Because it's a system. Are you following me now? It's called cosmos. Let me tell you where it started from. It started from a man in the Bible called Cain. The Bible says, and Cain departed from the presence of God. He came out from under the governing authority of that king. And the Bible says, Cain built a city. A type of a kingdom. After the name of his son, Enoch. And all kinds of rebellious activities began to stem from that system. And then Nimrod in Genesis chapter 11 took over. And he said, let us build a kingdom. Let's build a city whose power will reach to the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves. And right now what is happening in the world is the rebuilding of the tower of babel i'm going to be showing you five pillars and areas of kingdom influence thank you jesus for your word the entrance of your word gives light understanding to the simple so the anointing because satan is alive there's sickness everywhere oppression everywhere hallelujah and in Luke chapter 4, when Jesus came, he began to speak. And he said, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He found where it was written. In the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 61. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. For he has anointed. He has smeared me with the Holy Ghost and with power. He has empowered me to do the following. To preach the glad tidings to the poor to bind up the broken hearted to set the captives free so the manifestation of the anointing in your life helps you to begin to release the reality of the kingdom hallelujah that's why when you walk up to someone who is sick someone who has cancer and you say i bring you the superior power of the kingdom i represent these are two kingdoms standing and you demonstrate the superiority of your kingdom and say in the name of the king of my kingdom i'm standing as touching his authority i command this foreign cancer go the cancer going is proof that your king is truly king that's why miracles they are called miracles signs and wonders they point somewhere that's why we hold our miracle services that's why all of our meetings are power packed many of you who have gone on our facebook i'm sure you've you've seen the great testimony that we have the latest really that we have right now very powerful testimony hallelujah about two or three um fridays ago a woman not even a believer hallelujah came and she stood outside here had cancer hallelujah it was acute and uh, you know it was breast cancer and they were going to cut off her breast from shika verified hallelujah and she just stood here and saw people and said what's happening here and they said it's koinonia just hearing the word like you are hearing and we're just praying hallelujah and she just stood we're touching the authority of the king and right there she just said let god you know let god heal us too now instantly she was healed i was with her on sunday we don't announce miracles that we don't verify there are medical reports to this effect verified i spoke with her i don't mean recovery instant healing and wholeness of cancer <laughs> hallelujah hallelujah demonstrating the superiority of the king so the purpose of miracles is not to make a name for the man of god or to make a name for the ministry all this nonsense that people do that's why a true servant of god will use miracles as a pointer to reveal the kingdom are you seeing that so if your miracle and your manifestation of the gift of the spirit and your operation of the anointing are not signs leading men to another who is greater than you then you are betraying the king and you are termed a rebel and we have many rebels overseeing many ministries standing in the place of christ not allowing many people to come into the kingdom and not moving themselves 
so they have become the Jesuses for many people but every true servant of God is supposed to be an usher leading men to the king when Paul went to a certain city and they saw him he performed great miracles they called them Zeus and Hermes the Bible says Paul tore his garment and said we are but ordinary people John speaking said that I may decrease so that he my king will increase and any true servant of God any true ambassador of this kingdom must live to promote the king and the king alone hallelujah are you getting blessed tonight number three prosperity the subject of prosperity has been a very very controversial one for two reasons number one people have tried and tried and tried to get wealth and it has not come they have tried to use worldly ways to get God's wealth hallelujah and they have been frustrated because it has not come and so they say just forget anybody you see blessed especially young people just know that these people are cutting corners but that's not true hallelujah Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17 a says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord my cities true prosperity shall be spread abroad that's in your Bible cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities true prosperity so prosperity is a weapon listen many people try to acquire wealth so that they become happy many people try to acquire wealth to prove to their parents and loved ones that they are not poor that's nonsense are you listening to me hear me when you understand the agenda of the king you will know that you really hate the king by becoming poor hallelujah for many of us our concept of prosperity is to accumulate money and have wealth and have people bow at our feet and lick our leg the bible calls such people rich fools the issue is not the rich the issue is that the person is a fool why a fool because they do not understand the purpose of prosperity the bible says the prosperity of fools will destroy them there are many people being destroyed by their prosperity building a wall around themselves and making money their confidence he said woe unto he that puts his strength in a man hallelujah when you want to organize a crusade We've had the privilege of organizing some crusades over the years and this crusade spend we spend money are you listening to me prosperity is a tool with all humility if there's anything you appreciate in this place it was not gotten by tongues are you listening to me the people outside are comfortable by the grace of god watching the projector you are comfortable watching in the projector you're sitting and there's light there's the fan blowing you i hope you know that all of these things have financial implications let me tell you something if you truly love god you will embrace his economic system to be empowered for the sake of his kingdom you cannot help the poor by becoming one of them so it's not the issue of me i don't like all these canal things carnality materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of those materials upon your life when christ is above anything in your life it does not destroy you that's why people are dying dying in haiti the throne of god is still made of gold he will never reduce it to silver And so you must believe in the wealth of the kingdom it's a tool to advance the kingdom let me tell you something do you know how many believers have bowed down to Baal because of money statistics tells us that about 90 percent of divorce cases that we have even in nigeria today are directly or indirectly related to finances many of our ladies that sleep around for money do they sleep with us how much do we have as young people is it not those who have money that come and take them and we have many church people just dancing in the morning early in the morning in the morning i will rise and praise the lord and satan who is the god of that system when they finish praying they come out and they don't have food to eat and satan stands and said i will give you all this if you would just bow and the people say we preach in church and say 
don't bow. And they say, so what do I do? He said, I don't know, but shall I don't bow. And the man is saying, I must pay the school fees of my children. The Bible says, any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel. And we say, don't be corrupt. Don't loot. They say, okay, teach me God's way. We say, forget it. Don't loot. And when the man is under pressure, he will sign that document. When the lady is under pressure, she will sign and say to hell with anything. And then we keep looking and say, the ladies are corrupt. The young people are poor. The Bible says the poor, the rich, it didn't say the rich, Christ, the rich will rule over the poor. Are you listening to me? So you better undo this poisonous mindset that Satan has put in believers. As long as we remain in poverty, there are many churches crying and knocking at the gate of government, preaching lies and prophesying lies, seeking favor. Nonsense. Because we do not understand that we are ambassadors of a superior kingdom. For many people, the wealthy people in their church have taken the place of the Holy Spirit. And it's what they want that is being done. What are we saying? Hallelujah. And so because I gave a seed of 30 million naira, I come and tell the pastor, there are some people that hate me. Preach on hatred. The pastor says, yes, Lord. And he comes on stage. He said, I was sleeping by 5 a.m. And the Lord told me, son, stand up. I have a word for you. And I had hatred in my spirit. Shout hatred. <laughs> Can I tell you something, friends? I have said it. People have termed it to be arrogance. I'm sorry if you think it's arrogance. Let me tell you something. The wealth and the prosperity of this ministry is not tied to any man. It's tied to the direct hand of God. That's why we preach the way we preach without apology. We bring the uncompromising word of truth because I tell you under God, we have not bowed to bear and we will not bow. There is a way you eat the king's food and you cannot talk against the king. You can't eat the king's food and talk against the king. But we are that remnant, that uncompromising generation that will stand and challenge the gods of this system. That's why we are teaching what we are teaching. So prosperity is very important. Number four. It's a language many people out of their quest for humility have rejected. It's called influence. I want to show you how God designed his kingdom to be advanced. Influence. Look up. Let me do a little experiment. Sweetheart, come. All of you appreciate this lady. I mean a, a real ovation. For whatever reason, just clap. Keep clapping. Just turn. Keep clapping. Everybody, I mean, clap and shout. Look at them. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Look at what is happening to her. She's happy and enjoying it, although she cannot understand. This same character or this same attribute is inherent in every one of us, including the religious people. I've not seen anybody that frowns when they clap for him. We all desire influence for parents when they call your child. And the first position is you see the man sometimes trying to package himself and then he tries to find different ways of accommodating. Come on, am I talking? Help me. How much more the king that you represent? The Bible says the hour has come. John 17 verse 1. It said now the hour has come. It said glorify thy son. That thy son may bring glory to you. That's how God gets glory. When the sons are glorified. Glorify now thy son. That thy son may bring glory to you. Are you listening to me? To reveal his glory and his majesty is found in Psalms 145 and the Hebrew word used here is called doxazo a display of his glory to let the world know and let me tell you something when you come to a position of influence let me tell you the advantage of influence the hearts of many are connected to you and at that point it's easy to change their hearts look at me do you know that if Michael Jackson just lift his hand and say, I get, I'm born again. 
one over one million people can be born again instantly that's the power of influence there are many young people sagging their jeans down cutting their heads into pieces trying to look like people who have influence and the church was supposed to rise up there and create a true picture of what the kingdom represents have been allowed to chicken out let me tell you something if you do not love excellence in your life you are frustrating the agenda of the king because when you are excellent and you are competent you will gain what we call influence when you gain influence you will come to a point where you are a voice and at that point anything you say when Cecilia Ibu was having a thanksgiving the number of unbelievers that came for that thanksgiving why because they need her they don't love god like that but they need her so they had to come hallelujah and i or richard jaffo preached his life out he said now that i have this caliber of people let me use the opportunity and preach every devil out of them let me tell you something there are certain classes of people that your tongues will never make them come to you is your influence the bible says see yet thou a man diligent in his business he said he will not stand before mean men he will stand before kings i was watching the forbes forbes um first 100 world's richest people there's no believer in any of them about 95 percent of all of them are members of freemason illuminatis they are the ones who control the education of our children they are the ones who control everything many of you do you know many believers just say whatever will be will be this world is not our own we don't love the world the bible says for god so loved the world that you are hating <laughs> hallelujah are you getting blessed this is a thought-provoking teaching it's not just some church activity it's supposed to compel us to rise up hallelujah by the grace of god because of this platform that god has given us it has given us a measure of influence is that correct and that's why many of us can come i would not be able to go to all your houses one by one and call you but through the medium of influence what happens you can come around and the message of the kingdom can be communicated there are six prophetic areas where the world satan has captured god bless you sweetheart thank you very much hallelujah many people watch mtv and watch channel O, and we frown they asked one of the mtv directors one time and said how come you have influenced children of ages i think from ages 8 to 16 and he laughed he said we have not influenced them we own them we own that entire generation that's what he said and it's not a lie they have designed systems let me tell you how the kingdom advances through these things mindset say after me mindset. mindset the world is a system that gives you a mindset are you following me now so an average child the moment he grows up i mean the moment he is born he's exposed to a system that begins to give him a mindset let me show you six areas that the church has neglected in our churchianity and satan is using it and advancing his kingdom Christianity is the only religion that holds crusades after crusade after crusade. But there are many ministries and movements that hold no crusade, yet they are advancing at the speed of light because they understand the structure of the kingdom. Number one, sports. Sports is an area where the tower of Babel is being built. Hallelujah right now sport has become a religion i hope you understand that there are many people who have made merchandise out of sports and there are almost no ambassadors in that sector of the kingdom why because we have taught people the moment people begin to sense the anointing they tell them kai that means one day you stand on the pulpit can i surprise you hear me those you call ministers are those the bible calls the gifts that are supposed to train the ministers the ministers are those sent to these systems to represent and reproduce the life and the character of Christ. Hallelujah. Sports, number two, in the area of arts. Music, fashion. 
this is an area that the church has neglected you just need to own your radio and you hear all kinds of things from morning to night and those people have paid their price they are competent so we say so long as they don't mention satan i will listen you know i like it you come to church here it's only in church that you see people sing no rehearsals they don't do anything they just walk hallelujah <laughs> hallelujah every kind of excellence and mediocrity is found in the church whenever you hear quality sound good music everything know that it is satan who is being promoted and we sit down and watch and many times we collect offering and say lord let it be for the advancement of your king what are you saying the advancement of his kingdom is not theory are you getting blessed please because we are going to pray i'll soon stop here and then it's a series so we'll continue every time you see excellence you need to go where unbelievers are doing something that glorifies satan and you will see levels of excellence and competence they are sound they are organized they are excellent and they directly promote satan but how about it ends? mediocrity is the most important thing the voice doesn't matter it's just the revelation and say who and the keyboardist for 10 minutes is trying to find the key punching and then he's smiling you don't provoke yourself the bible says by the truth now somebody say you are called into fashion who do you know in fashion let me i don't know anybody oh okay one person versace these are the systems you want to conquer and you do not even know them those in the world the sports people the media people those at the forefront of music and fashion day and night they are building themselves they sign contracts with satan and they keep investing in themselves you ask them where are you going they keep innovating things because they live for the glory of satan but we have many believers who cross our legs and we think god will do everything and you say i know one day the top is my portion you really think so the top is your portion how we don't invest in ourselves we just come and mumble tongues for one hour and then we say my destiny and then you go to a place and they send you out they say no job for you and you are angry why will i give you a job when you are not competent why should i give you a job when you make my company lose are you get are you am i provoking somebody let me tell you whether they draw cross with anointing oil on your head there are certain things that only competence in partnership with the holy spirit will give you believe what i'm saying i pray in tongues but we are the nehemiah generation that understand that with one hand we hold the sword but with another hand we keep beauty so many lazy believers who are not doing anything in their life you say i want to be a writer you don't know any writer you don't read anything about writers you don't have any article about a writer and he say one day i'll be at the top every time you see an unbelieving writer he say one day i'll challenge you you really think so am i provoking somebody number three politics and government it's an area that requires the influence of the kingdom many of the policies that punish us in this country today were enacted by people who do not understand the structure and the concept of the kingdom hallelujah and you can laugh about it and think it doesn't matter until they begin to bring into the house of assembly that they should permit gay and permit lesbians and they will say hey is happening Nigeria? Is happening? where the it wasn't enacted by angels it was enacted by human beings you can imagine if we have people who understand the value and the structure of the kingdom not religion men who understand the operation of the kingdom hallelujah another area business in the area of business there are many church folks we've left the business of the people who say ah business business is such an ugly thing it's a corrupt thing forget jare swindle you see believers there's nobody that does clean business so forget about their tongues can't you be the first who will not bow and they are the ones in control of the finances 
and they move people wherever they want hallelujah you can sit down and see a company that has kingdom believers and your director can just look at you and say i don't like you you are fired and in an instant this guy was praying and fasting for a, 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 a boss project he suddenly changes his prayer point oh god will my life not move forward and those who have the wealth do not fear god they cross their legs and play believers like a chess because we do not understand that these are the structures of the kingdom and the moment they see certain people rise to that area they stand and preach and say forget all of the people that are doing this you will perish with the world are we ready for change if we are let me tell you the next revival that is coming is not going to happen in the pulpit the next set of apostles and prophets are going to be sent to these systems that's the structure of the coming revival so for many of you who are envisioning coming to stand one day here one day you will come and you will not find anybody because the believers are busy repro reproducing god's life another area family satan is killing families we do not understand that that's a system can i tell you something for those of you who are married and are in ministry or those who soon get married can i tell you something your family comes above and before your ministry hello before you were born christ has been preached after you die he will still be preached when you see an armed robber on the street he had a father and a mother correct we do not realize that according to god's principle and structure the family is supposed to be the first encounter of that child with god's life and the kingdom life hallelujah sorry let me have one sweetheart come let me use you as an example come appreciate this beautiful lady <laughs> wonderful children of pastor williams come sweetheart quick 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 hallelujah now i've had the opportunity of visiting pastor williams house again and again and i've seen the kind of love and training you can imagine these little children at their age at their age where what were you doing some of us were far from the gate of the kingdom but you can imagine when we say pray if we are praying for one hour these children are praying for one hour when we say speak imagine what this lady will do when she gets to 13 years old are you are you seeing how that family life is important there are many ministers that leave their families dying and they are running to go and save the lost they are going to take nations and their children are pioneering another move they are not aware of <laughs> hallelujah is that let me tell you if you are not ready to train your children in the fear of the lord don't get married don't give birth are you listening to me very important and that's one area satan is perverting the family life like never before people are losing priorities and they look at children and when they say bring this child to church they look, look and say ah, ah little children like this but these little children can go and watch pornography at their age on the internet and no one stops them the parents pass and see the children they say ah okay children say with their little thing then one day the child tells you mommy i've been the queen of the coast since three years the queen of the coast <laughs> queen of what i thought you were young <laughs> hallelujah can i tell you something let me challenge parents here and prospective parents the word train up a child does not mean discuss with them it makes it means make them do it if i'm going to church my child is going to follow me no matter what the argument is we'll talk later <laughs> hallelujah because rebellion the bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of the child the rod of correction does not mean kill your child i say i will kill you bring me belt bring me belt and you beat the child i will match you i'm the one who will kill you by myself before you kill me i'll kill you that's not kingdom training the bible doesn't say train up a child in the way you want him to go there is a pattern that you are not the one who designed it as a parent you receive it manoah said give us the blueprint of how we will train this child hallelujah 
Bless this lady. I love you. God bless you, sweetheart. Hallelujah. There are many parents that for your children, the first time they hear I love you is one guy who comes with his baggy jeans and his chain with a gun on it. And then he comes and says, hey, how are you? I love you. And although the lady is really embarrassed by his outlook, she cannot deny that it's a word she has always wanted to hear. And then she says, I hate you, I hate you. And then in the night she flashes him. And then he flashes her back. Then when they're about to sleep between 12 and 1, flash again or high. Then the guy calls, yeah, I knew you would call. And later on, you find out why a nice church-going girl suddenly begins to follow someone and is corrupted. Because a family where there is no love, a family where there is no togetherness, a family where the parents are not humble to say I'm sorry when they need to say I'm sorry. That kind of a family is not a true picture. The first example of God should be seen in a father. The first example of the Holy Spirit should be seen in a mother. The first example of unity should be found in the couples. Hallelujah. To train the children in the fear and the admonition of God. I have a dream. That after 20 years of marriage, you come to my house and see us dancing and rejoicing. No rat race, no fighting up and down. I'll forever be chasing after you. That's what you hear us singing. Because all the laws that make for peace and prosperity and joy, we are adhering to it. Are you getting blessed? I'm provoking something. The last area, media. Right now you can just log on and browse pornography for free. It has already been paid. Satan paid people to prove that Jesus is not Lord. He is still paying people. Hallelujah. You just open any a nice Christian site with a little clip. Five minutes they say pay fifty dollars. Then say I'm not ready. And then somebody say, Come and see. I had an encounter with Satan. It's free on YouTube. Watch. Hallelujah. Are you getting blessed? The media. It's just right now that there's a media revolution. God is raising media giants. For some of you, as I mentioned this area, something in your spirit says, Are you hearing? Are you hearing? God is telling you, are you hearing? The moment the spirit of prayer began to come on you, sweetheart, you just say, Pastor. Who told you it's pastor? Maybe it's media or fashion. Many of us just think ministry is about standing and you envision where you have a congregation of 5,000 members and then as you are coming, they just bring water for you and say, Daddy, sir. If that is your concept of kingdom advancement, there's need for real repentance tonight. These areas are the areas that the church have left to the world. And can I tell you something? Our praying in tongues will never make meaning to the world until we begin to infiltrate these systems. That's why we are holding this teaching. Hallelujah. But I know we are that generation that the next set of sports people, I look forward to times when before they start playing, while a stadium is gathered or after doing all of those things and, and scoring goals, they give you an opportunity to talk to 6 million people. And you tell them, I speak under the authority of the Lord, whose I am and who I serve. That statement alone breaks someone who has been mentoring your life and say, this is my mentor. I'll do anything he's doing. And now that he has mentioned Jesus, what is it about Jesus? And they begin to search and God will lead them to a site and they will check. Jesus is Lord.com because the media giants are already doing their work there. And then you read and know. Let me tell you, if we depend on only our 50,000 and 500,000 man crusade to get people born again in the next 100 years we will not affect the world in five minutes the mindset of a generation is changed by an evil program on the tv five minutes a woman like oprah winfrey stands on tv and declares to people that jesus is not lord and in five minutes i was checking her facebook and she has six million followers six million followers on facebook hallelujah 
Coca-Cola has 23 million. And I check many churches. 10, 5, 11, 22, 110. 300, 700, and then a few hundred thousand. Those are the mega ministries. So, can you see that Christianity is not a call to laziness. It's a call to service. Are you following me? So, after you get born again and you get filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost trains you and then He sends you. And then He begins to call you. He says, Oh no, I'm releasing you to the IT industry. Go and challenge the people. Steve Jobs, of blessed memory, he has gone wherever he is. Hallelujah. And all kinds of people. And he says, I'm sending you. Wherever there is darkness, God sends you as the light. And he says, go as the light. And he comes and says, Mr. Yums, you draw and you do design. I'm sending you to this industry. He comes and says, Aaron, you are an events planner. And you do logistics. I'm sending you to that system. He says, sweetheart, I'm sending you to this system. This is um, representing the head of department. When he says, I'm, I'm sending you. Reveal my creativity. I'm sending you. And then we come to church and pray in tongues. And build ourselves. And the gifts of the church. Help us and bless us. And equip us. After church, we come out. That's why I don't believe in a church that holds service seven times a week. That's nonsense. Don't stone me. If for seven days in a week you are in church, all the days of your life, you will never affect the system. Because the mission field is not in the church. The mission field is outside the church. It says you are the light of the world, not the church. So we come and we are built. We are equipped. On Monday, you are at work in the bank. And someone comes. And while you are signing the check, you see by the Spirit. And he says, sir, you've been having a challenge in your family. And he looks. And then you tell him, I bring you the word of the Lord. I know that you're having a financial problem. Begin to tithe and be serious. Tithing is a principle of the kingdom. And then you just turn his receipt and write your number. Or you write a number of a ministry. He can go and say, God bless you. The king has found expression. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you are an architect. And people come and give you a difficult project. And you sit down. And you lock yourself and say, Kabo Sataba Kayaba. I'm not an ordinary person. Lord, I'm an ambassador. Make way for me. And then God makes the way. And in the night while you are sleeping, the, the Daniel said, while I slept, the visions of heaven are communicated unto you. And you wake up. And you come up with something that will cause the government to call you. The government will say, how did you do it? That's what happened to the three Hebrew boys. That's what happened to Daniel. The one we call Belshazzar. He manifested a dimension. And in Babylon, they saw. And they knew that Christ was the king. It wasn't because he was praying in tongues. It was because he could translate this thing. God sends you into the business world. And you begin to innovate things that alleviate poverty in people's lives. And you come to a point where your life is directly blessing people. At that point, your Christianity is meaningful. Hallelujah. And then you come to a point where you are sitting in your house. And you just decide and say, this week we are going to cook. And call our neighbors, Christians or non-Christians. Without discrimination. And you put your beautiful garden because you have received God's prosperity message and so you you have killed greed too in your life and so you understand that you are not just trying to do a favor to build yourself an empire and you bring the people hallelujah let me share with you a few testimonies to the glory of God you see the people that come and and offer us free uh, uh, the bus transport let me say to the glory of God when their leader is not a Christian he was sick and his wife put to bed immediately she put to bed the protocol department were in shika we brought him gifts and we greeted them that's why we are friends with them today are you following me now they have been able to see that's why every time they come although we are praying in tongues they enjoy what we are doing they are getting blessed by koinonia because we have given them room to be employed are you following me that's that's what we call strategic apostolic reformation not just making noise in church but coming to a point where the world that as you pray in tongues because of you God gives you an idea and many people are gainfully employed 
even if you are not benefiting so much from it is putting food on the table of others you become a principality that the government must come to terms with there are certain people in this country who have understood this apostolic reformation bless god for their lives building universities that put in the value and the culture of the kingdom hallelujah a man called billy graham all the presidents in america from his time until barack obama they go and pay homage to him why because he has gained a dimension of influence are you listening to me he really didn't raise wheelchairs are you following me now he didn't do all the charismatic things but he understood kingdom and he gained a dimension of influence and because of him many many have come to the saving knowledge of christ rick warren who wrote purpose driven life I've been invited many times to the government house to speak. For many Christians, when we invite, they invite us to the government house, we are just thinking of how we we'll chop. And someone who is anointed, who loves God, suddenly gets to the government house and he's like, I beg, Jerry, I'm coming. And then you say, Shabaka, barata, ba, 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 ba. I see that you. And we begin to behave and do all kinds of things because we do not understand let me tell you as a believer everywhere you are realize that the kingdom is in search of expression through you and so you find out what can i do that will bring the kingdom to bear so you go to your community and one day you gather all the young children and cook rice for them and you make poster jesus loves you and you hold something you must not have the name of ministry it mustn't be joshua selman international ministries we like names and we like titles we don't think kingdom unbelievers think kingdom everywhere they go their primary concern is how can the kingdom find expression he said when you pray say this thy kingdom come thy will be done in the earth as it is in heaven i've made up my mind that everywhere i go the kingdom will find expression edgemi makes shirts Look at the beautiful shirts by the media people. This is an artistry and the creativity of one. He is a minister, but he has allowed other areas of his life to find expression and give God glory. Hallelujah. We believe in it. I'm being practical and I'm sharing this. Dio is going for a, a, a media training right now with some of the top media people in this country. Hallelujah. He's going for a training. He's the head of the media. But it's not just about praying in tongues. We realize that we have an agenda. We are going, we are invading the media. And so he's leaving tomorrow and going for a training for a period of two weeks. Certified. Every one of these media people, you see them doing what they are doing, they were trained. Because the church is not just a place to sit down and learn. A, play, a church is the place of building. And any true apostolic move equips people and prepares them to be revivalists so on one hand we pray in tongues on the other hand we prepare ourselves Ibo is there Ibi can you stand up quickly 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 stand up that's a fashion designer that's a kingdom driven fashion designer on his way to happen now he's coming and he's receiving and he's on his way to happen we are not just praying in tongues are you following me now we are on our way to happen so hear me if all you are thinking about is just church and how i'll have my ministry me and my wife my child will be in charge of media change your mind and begin to think kingdom are you listening to me kingdom think kingdom many of us need to wake up this night and as you say your kingdom reigns above all you say lord i know you are sending me i hear your voice i hear your voice i'm not born again for nothing i realize that there is an influence of the kingdom that has been mandated upon my life i told myself i said lord i will be competent in every area that you have sent me to represent your kingdom and that means taking that money you are using to buy timberland to buy the books and the materials that will equip you for being an ambassador all this nonsense instant gratification get rich quick we young people are in it it's time to sit down and realize that there is a mandate of a generation upon your shoulder and no matter what sacrifice it will take that you say i will do this for my king and you sit down 
how many of you guys who want to be fathers how many of you have gone to read any book about principles of fatherhood how many of you have gone to read any book about how to discipline children how many of you have sat to search the word of god and find out how to train children it's not about looking at a lady and liking her how many ladies are ready to sit down to find out your role as a wife a minister and as a mother kingdom advancement i was reading something about billy graham and his wife told him something she said you are an evangelist go i will support you i will stand by you what all this mr big's nonsense that people do someone says hi you say i'm hungry you have not even replied because that's what we watch in nigerian films and all of this we have been trained to believe that marriage is rest relationship not knowing that you sow you wait and then you reap together strategic kingdom advancement hallelujah and some of you god is calling you in the area of business you sleep and you have dreams god is giving you things and satan is telling you i will give you this if you will just bow hear me friends we are the generals of god are you hearing me inside and outside there is a clarion call from the spirit it's time for the citizens of the kingdom to arise the greatest publicity of a kingdom citizen is to remain in the secret place and keep building keep building keep building with one hand you study the word and you learn the principles with another hand you begin to translate the realities of the spirit hallelujah we're talking with steve and he was telling me some of his plans for the future he would sit down and pray and god would give him songs and then he will write them by the time he sings these songs and they are blessing look at some of these songs that are coming from heaven one day god will grant us access and some of you who have been called to this area of music we will release these songs to you and you will raise it i look forward to times when when we tune our radio we we'll just hear your kingdom reigns. Bless God for heal song. Bless God. I love them with my life. They are real ambassadors of the kingdom. Real ambassadors of the kingdom. They have no apology for exalting the name of God. If I have a company today, you will hold Bible study at least once a week in my company. You are not interested, it's not by force. When poverty cains you because there will be darkness out there and we will pay in such a way that you, you cannot reject us. We are going to buy MTV. We are going to buy Channel O. Oh, we will. We will. We will change it to Miracle TV. <laughs> we are not praying in tongues for nothing, friends. We may not look like it. But let me tell you it's in you the bible says now are we the sons of god we are rising our parents like the eli generation have done their best and they are transferring the button to the samuels and we will carry it and represent the kingdom a time will come they will come and meet you and someone will want to bribe you and you hold back his hand and not just say no i don't do it you say no I represent a kingdom don't just say i don't do it someone comes to meet you and says can you come to my hotel I say no i don't do it what you are just trying to say is that uh, uh, i don't do it with you you must let the person know that i represent a kingdom and i'm bounded by a modus operandi and part of it is that we are not engaged in this i have a king and i pay an allegiance to him hallelujah Ejimi does designs when you tell him to do a design for you that is pornographic or has anything that is anti-god he will not do it because you like him you will change your mind ha. i look forward to a time when the world although they don't like us they cannot deny the impact we are bringing that's the time at that time we will gather on sundays and pray and every time we are praying although they do not understand what we are saying they cannot deny the effect is telling on their salaries is telling on the economy you come and meet someone working in your office and like joseph the person is depressed and he said what happened say i was just told i have cancer and he said come with me as the manager of the company say in the name of the lord jesus cancer go and the person is healed and he said i thought it's only in church and he says to let you know that the kingdom of god is advancing 
Hallelujah. So arise, media giants. Arise. Arise. It's not just about praying in tongues and sitting down. The call of the kingdom is a call to responsibility. You must find your place in the realm of greatness by becoming unique at your giftings, value, whatever ability you have. Never ask for a dimension you do not have the value to exchange for it. The law of value works based on a reward system. Lord, I want you to give me 1,000 members. You must rise to the place where you sustain spiritual value in terms of grace, revelation, access, understanding, and content to be trusted with those kinds of people. When you rise to that level of anointing, you don't have to call them. They will come in response to it. So if you pastor 12 people, don't sit down and complain and get angry and say, I, I saw in my vision that I'm pastoring a nation. But as you increase in value, are we together? The day three dead people are raised from your church, you don't need to publicize for new people. Journalists will come, you don't need to invite them. Is that true? Listen, I want you to take this, take this very law, law two, very seriously. The law of value. That means if people ignore me, if everywhere I go I am ignored, it's not because they hate me. I am not a contributor. Are we together now? The world celebrates contributors, not, not takers. Unfortunately, we live in a society that is full of takers. What is in this for me? And life tells you there are all kinds of blessings, but only a portion for those who have the ability and the grace to contribute. Are we together? Whoever solves the problem gets the reward. Goliath of God was roaring and there was a throne. There was a wife. There was a tax-free opportunity. Everybody was afraid to confront that challenge. But a young teenager called David came and said, Saul, I'm able to take on Goliath. And he said, what shall be done for the one who does this? He will get a wife. His family will be freed from tax and he will be honored. David said, I take up that challenge. Do you know it was a risk? If Goliath killed David, they will say, we said it. Now go and bury him. And um, Jesse, take it easy. You have other sons. So it was a risk. Standing between you and your throne is a problem to solve. The kinds and the quality of problems you solve determines the reward that comes to you. Are we together? Yes. That's why there are different kinds of restaurants based on the quality that they produce. Are we together? The amount you pay for this chair is not the amount you pay for the white chair you are sitting on. Why? They are all chairs, but qualities. Even among the stars, one excelleth above another in glory. That determines your, your, your reward. It is foolish to give so little to life and demand so much. No. Your reward is commensurate to your value. So if I think my financial returns is small, that simply means I am solving small problems or solving problems for small people. Whoever solves a millionaire's problems has access to a millionaire's finance. Are we together? Yes. The tailor who sold your cloth is laughing with your money now in his house. You parted with that money because you could not sew for yourself. The day you learn how to sew, you will stop paying him. Is that true? Ladies and mothers, you went to the market today. You woke up in the morning with money in your pocket. Now that money is not there. Where did it go to? It went to the one who solved the problem you were looking for. So if all you do is keep meeting problem solvers, you will be broke. Because money will continue to leave you to them. The day you join them as a problem solver, somebody's money now comes to you. Are we together? When you solve more problems than your needs, you become rich irrecoverably. More problems than your needs. Your needs are 10,000. The problems you solve is 1,000. You are minus 9,000. That's a life of frustration. Up today, down tomorrow. Are we blessed? The law of value. The key 
to getting out of a life of complex a life of inferiority it's not just to say people don't like me oh i am this i came from this village all that is nonsense the world will throw away every excuse to honor valuable people there are sport athletes who sometimes have to speak their native languages and they will interpret nobody has forced them to speak english you know why because what they are doing is their sport their field their footballers that you see with all kinds of things regardless of their limitations they chase after them who pursues you is a sign of your value who pursues you if weak and low and beggarly people seek you it's a sign that that is the quality of the value you provide for them if great influential people pursue you it's a sign that that is the value listen every man's financial destiny with respect to value and solution provision is left in his hands it's left the hand of god long ago it's in your hands we have a very funny world that believes people should just bless you and give you money for doing nothing and i always ask that question who do you think you are the world is made up of 7.2 billion people who wake up every morning looking for who can solve their problems and you don't solve any problem you see that's why armed robbery and corruption is bad you see that a corrupt person has reward without value you see why we say corrupt people are bad so we see someone building houses and estates but we and whose problem did you solve if you can show us the problem you solve we don't have a problem with the rewards whether financial or otherwise so next time you ever see a rich man don't be angry find out what value what problem they are solving that answers the question as to whether pastors should be blessed or not i'm not talking of a life of extravagance you know most times when people see pastors blessed they say ah, just for talking that's the thinking of a fool the words i speak unto you they are what spirit and life a pilot is paid over 0.5 million per month why because he's flying people across places that's someone's salary for decades and someone just finishes an aviation school within two years or three years and is receiving over 500,000 is the value every accident from a plane crash ends in death immediately except some divine intervention comes so that's a risk are we together you sit down and for 50 minutes sometimes eight hours when you are traveling from africa to asia 90 percent of your journey is across water you don't see a single land and somebody is risking to take you over 45 50 thousand um, um, uh, feet above sea level now that's mastery so he's rewarded you who didn't have the courage to go to that school you are the payer and the pilot who risks himself is the recipient the day you are angry what do you do you go to the school when you learn it are we together do not ever frown at a rich man again do not ever insult rich people we have this ugly most of our loved ones sincere people but they are truthfully speaking not offering any value and whenever they see blessed people they say see them see them it's a terrible way of living next time you see great people don't be angry find out what they are doing that you're not doing the law of value number three the law of competence and excellence closely related to the law of value value as a raw material is useless it must be refined before it is rewardable value must be refined before it is rewardable value as a potential is not rewardable it's the same thing as seeing crude oil as a dark paste of smelly substance but when you pass it through the required operations then you produce foil you produce other um, other very useful um, uh, um, what do we call it now very useful 
things that are required for home for cars and whatever you have and then they reward them competence is very important i taught you that excellence is a language it draws certain people to you the same way if i speak yoruba now every yoruba person hears immediately and they respond if i say praise the lord in yoruba will you answer in english you will answer in yoruba because i spoke your language if i say praise the lord in hausa all who understand hausa will answer back if i say praise the lord in Igbo or whatever language i use that's how excellence is excellence is a language in other words whoever understands me you are invited so if you do not come to the seat of excellence it's a sign you did not hear the language and you are not invited two excellent people can come into your life and reward you the equivalent of 1000 people excellence is powerful you must be accurate you must be serious with whatever you are doing you are a tailor be excellent you are a hairdresser be excellent you are a preacher be excellent excellence requires thoroughness excellence requires exposure excellence requires having a reference excellence requires consistent development consistent development outsmarting your own records surpassing ordinary standards that's excellence anything not done excellently is not worth being seriously rewarded are we together you make yam and egg sauce but the plate is not excellent it's not washed dirty plate dirty spoon you are not serious it's a sign you don't believe in your business i shouldn't come there are we together you are by that atmosphere attracting certain kinds of people the day you change your plate you are serious when people come into your restaurant you greet them you smile you're welcome sir please be seated how may we help you oh i need so 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 and so do you have cold water oh we don't have cold water here sir but we can get it for you wow he calls his colleagues because experience markets i just found a restaurant when i came here they are so cautious they are nice they are wonderful people i shouted at them and truly i later realized that i was wrong yet they apologized are we together i finished eating and i was happy you are a cab driver people enter your car you don't just frown where are you going i'm going to sabo oh yeah let's go when you reach you just park oh yeah okay, come down my money you will attract certain kinds of people but one day one rich man would disguise himself and sit down in your cab and you greet him hello sir thank you so much my joy to pick you where exactly are you going to sir sir oh really you have something doing there sir thank you before you know it he looks at you how much is it 300 naira can you give me a discount well sir honestly i would love to but it may not be possible i sincerely apologize let's leave it at 300 not lie lie 300 i've been working in the morning that's a terrible person are you learning the law of excellence yes there's no need you can be nice loving yet firm it's 300 and then you drop the person um sir would you want my contact details i'm always available for you my advantage is that i live within zaria i don't have to come from Samo. if you need me i'll be ready to help you before you know it that driver attracts three or four or five people now everybody is driving but one is doing it excellently your car is neat you don't come and your car is smelling around doing all kinds of things you're driving someone he stops later on the road say oh God, how will we do now there are too many people who are not excellent they do regular things and they want extraordinary rewards listen stop excellence is doing ordinary things in an extraordinary way are we together i'm just recapping on this laws very important you must be excellent you are a hairstylist keep your saloon clean you are a tailor you don't have to show us you are a tailor by pieces of fabrics all around you can organize your place are we together organize your place you can't buy an ac buy a fan get a television let people come and be watching something 
must be excellent you must be competent say i receive grace to be competent if you're frying akara on the road you can make your akara the best in samaru the best in zaria find out what can i add to this akara that will make it very nice maybe the packaging someone comes to take pub why don't you say okay let me get a little tampoline just at a corner here what if he's a, a respected personality wants to come and take akara and pub does he have to sit down under smoke i said that's how we do it here oh, sorry the cups are full people are drinking the pub and he's sitting down he's hungry and doesn't have all that time but he has to wait for somebody to finish taking his pap. Then you quickly rinse it and pour his own. No. No. That is a dirty environment, a dirty lifestyle, and a life of mediocrity. Why don't you get different kinds of cops? You have brains. Discern people. Somebody comes looking as a smart gentleman. Then you can start doing certain things. Make some cops. Factor your cost into it get a little if you if you want take away you package it well don't just squeeze an, a newspaper a wire paper or a, a jam paper i don't know who wrote what there there is ink you are putting hot akara on blue ink are we together now no why don't you use what's the name of this paper ladies foil paper right why don't you change if you still must use that your own akara you put it first in a foil paper and wrap it factor your cost into it everybody say excellence get a clean table clean table put everything you're welcome sit down sir and then you'll be surprised one day somebody will tell you i have a little get together and we just decided we are rich people so it's not like we're looking for what to eat but we just want to eat akara and pap and you are the one who will make it and you'll be saying i used to sell it 10 10 naira. i said no no no, we don't do that we're giving you fifty thousand. whatever you can make just make and bring not everybody is threatened by price there are people who have conquered price they are looking for quality don't ever be deceived that everybody is asking how much no there are people who have conquered price they are looking for quality they are interested in an experience not price law number what's what's the fourth law law of what very powerful law that you must never forget as it is in your mind so it will be in your life realities are first shaped in your mind before shaped in your life you don't become neat physically first no neatness starts in your mind if you are dirty in your mind and you are neat physically in three days your environment will change to look like what your mind is do not try to correct things first from the physical correct it from the mind are we together yes if you are lazy don't just try to prompt yourself change it from the mind everything that is wrong with your physical environment came from your mind environmental conditioning genetic conditioning you have to change your mind that's why the bible says to renew our mind by the word of god i've seen people who you try to adjust their lives and temporarily they adjust but like a rubber ring you must return back to your default position you don't believe in honor because you don't know it it is not a mindset somebody whips you and says are you not going to greet him i say good afternoon sir and then in five minutes you are back to your default position of being rude and lousy it is terrible to try to fake physically something that is not a reality in your mind you will betray yourself eventually so the key to lasting change is to first create that correction from your mindset and then naturally it will flow if you are a a dishonorable person the key is to first change your mindset are we together if you are a loud person change your mindset the law of the mind is powerful many people have changed their lives because they changed their mindsets some of you before you came for koinonia you insulted men of god and insulted everyone you joined your parents you joined your loved ones you joined other men of god to tear down other people but as you came the word of god did something to your thinking is that true 
there was an adjustment and you made up your mind that I will love all men. I leave judgment to God. Now, you don't try to not insult people. You are free already. There are some of you, like we spoke about excellence, some of you were not excellent at all. But when you came just by observation, you felt, I have to be this. I should iron my clothes. I'm used to wearing clothes that I don't iron. I don't care whether it's ironed or not. But now I realize it's not the price of the clothes. It's who wears it. So I iron my clothes, even if it is 200 naira. I don't allow my socks to be smelling around, and then I now wear it. No. Mindset. The most helpless person on earth is one who is resistant to mental transformation. Anybody who is resistant to mental transformation, there's nothing you can do with that person. The law of the mind. That's law number what? Law number five. The law of faith. I'll teach you two laws now, very quickly, and then we'll pray. The law of faith. Hmm. We're teaching success systems. The fifth law is the law of faith. Say after me, the law of faith. F-A-I-T-H. The law of faith. The law of faith. If you will ever succeed in life, you will need to use your faith. What is faith? Faith is the action you take based on the conviction you have about God and his word. Faith is the action you take. The name given to the action. Not just the belief. The action that is taken based on conviction. Obedient action based on conviction and the word of god being the source of that conviction that's called faith so when i take action based on the understanding of the word of god i have my heart is full of conviction and it comp it compels my life to respond accordingly i am walking in faith faith is conviction plus obedience faith is conviction plus obedience faith is not obedience there must be an instruction before obedience faith is not just conviction that's called belief that you believe a thing does not mean you have faith faith is belief plus obedience conviction plus obedience many people claim they have faith they only believe the word of god are we together Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. Nobody will give you a guarantee for success. You will have to use your faith. Nobody will give you a guarantee for success. Read it. Everybody is projected. One to read. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken? And shall he not make it good? In other words, when God speaks, it is within his power to make it come to pass. Say God has the ability to make his word come to pass. Say it one more time. God has the ability to make his word come to pass. Write the following things down. Number one, you will have to take risks to succeed. You will have to take risks to succeed. In 2010, during our Kingdom Wealth Summit, I taught in the business session that faith in the realm of success, and especially in business and all of that, is spelled R-I-S-K. That's the spelling of faith. We live in a world of people who are so risk averse, so fearful, they will never do anything. Christians are some of the most fearful people in terms of taking action. It's one thing to wait upon the Lord and to wait for seasons. But it's another thing for you to know that this is a season and you close your eyes and take a step of faith. Brothers and sisters, if you must meet Jesus, you must walk on that water. If it be thou, bid me come. And he said, come. There are too many people who will not take action. 
you will not start that business because you are afraid i watch somebody lose i don't want to lose money i don't want to lose my shop i don't want to do this what if the birds die africa is full of what ifs and we never take action stand up and do something what if i apply and i don't get the job it will be that i wasted money it would take five thousand for me to go and submit my cv in lagos it will take another five thousand for me to return maybe i will need to book a hotel ten thousand and stay two days if i spend thirty thousand just to submit my cv what if i don't get the job there is no guarantee there is no uncle there we live in an age of fearful people risk averse people every champion every world changer listen to me is a person of risk abraham take your son see risk the law of faith a time must come in your success equation where you have to close your eyes and like esther say if i perish i perish failure is not the end of life don't fear failure when you fear failure you program it to happen in your life great people are not those without failures listen carefully great people are those who have learned how to rise even when they fall the brand seven up for years i didn't know why it was called seven up until i began to study brands and i found out that it was called seven up because the person tried six times six times and failed it was the seventh time that he succeeded that's why he called it seven up so six down and then seven up you drink it and you are happy but you are drinking somebody's success after failure what if he stopped the sixth time what if he stopped the sixth time like many of you have stopped most christians think because god said to do something means that you will succeed automatically you will still go through the law of process and many times it will require failure why failure because you have to learn why failure because you have to build mastery why failure because you have to understand how things work the body of christ thinks prophecy is just an escape route from going through the law of process make no mistakes when you see people rise they have made mistakes that you did a business and failed does not mean god did not speak to you and believers will be the first to tell you sam i warned you don't open a shop i told you there's no money in zaria you claim that god told you you opened a shop after one week and robbers came and waylaid you and by it they will say i saw a vision it's just that i didn't know how to tell you and based on that vision you close the shop and remain broke that's why many christians are poor broke and mediocre you sit down wishing i will do something one day until somebody just gets up and does it there is a vacancy i don't know anybody oh should i apply should i not apply and you are sitting there and you watch somebody with less qualifications than you go and submit the cv listen the world only honors men of action not just men of wish men of action after all the planning and everything you must take action take action i want to start the school forever you have not done anything apostle god called me to be a millionaire ceo you said this thing in the year 2000 you've not registered one company millions have passed through your hands you've not done anything i will do this i will do that the world is full of people at 84 they tell you when i was 20 years i wanted to do this and for 64 years they couldn't do anything the fearful and the cowardly never become great write it down the law of faith the fearful and the cowardly never become great there are people today i will learn how to drive in the name of jesus you started two weeks one one truck just passed near you and you said it's not by force the first time you you went to a driving lesson you were 19 now you are almost 40 you can't take a car by the road why not because there are no cars <laughs> i don't want to die but somebody needs to carry you from one place to the other yet you see some of these house boys have you seen them during salah nine years old on bike they don't think of failure all of them they learn how to ride bike in two hours they learn how to drive their buses within two days their august pack it for them in pz 
and then while they are gisting, the boys are the ones who keep pushing it and that's how they learn in two weeks they have learned you see somebody who cannot drive anything driving to mina and you see risks that should kill him listen brothers and sisters fear runs away from courageous people fear itself as a spirit is afraid of certain people the cowardly in life never become anything one guy called me one time and he said apostle um, we we are going to I, I think it's a crusade or so somewhere and he said apostle sorry is it possible for us to call you if we are stranded I said no I didn't send you go there and go to that field and experience what it means to have supernatural testimonies go and stand there there are coppers the moment they post them you are here they post them to Bielsa I don't know anybody you say everybody please call uncle this call auntie that how old are you 30 ah. because of inaction many of our parents the day they were leaving the village the only thing they left with was a blessing they returned back home after 20 years successful their parents just told them Tom, don't pursue women don't drink beer love God be serious we bless you bye bye when they came into the city they knew nobody but their God and they started listen let me teach you something never over pamper people give them an opportunity to take action especially for those of us who are rich love your children love everybody but don't over pamper people you must give people room to take action it is God that protects most of us that's why we have weak men today we have men who are like women you know why there is too much over pampering a young boy tells you he wants to write wayek and you tell him sit down come up with an idea how much is the form seven thousand okay think of something you can do to raise two thousand and he comes out after three hours playing computer games and he said i could not think of anything are there no grasses in people's houses to weed are we together that's why we raise a lot of irresponsible people what's wrong with meeting someone and say sir i am a young boy who is trying to um i want to move forward my parents do not have the opportunity to help me please sir can you allow me with your grass my budget is six thousand i don't know how much this will be but i can with your grass i can call my friends and you look at a young man walking his way to greatness and you can say go ahead and with it and instead of giving him one thousand or two thousand you can give him three thousand and your number you have helped that boy are we together there are many people who do not want to take action there are many men today who lost their job since year 2000 till today they have been given all kinds of flimsy excuses that's why we love prophecy because we think prophecy is an excuse for responsibility say in the name of jesus i receive grace tonight to take action give us job 325 never fear failure write it down never fear failure never fear failure for the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me and that which i was afraid of is come unto me this is job speaking never fear failure when you fear failure you create the you activate the law of expectation failure don't be afraid of stepping into the unknown be guided yes but know that no matter how people love you you will have to take that action god is speaking to someone here your excuses are over you are getting older and older and you are not getting established why because i am i don't that my uncle promised me when i was in 200 level now your uncle is dead stop crying thank god for your your father said he would not help you you must sit down and tell yourself i'm not going to beg again i sit down and i will do something let me tell you heaven will back those who will take action and be serious you are waiting for marriage to bail you out you are a lazy person you are a very very lazy person 
there are many men who are looking for wives i don't have a problem with our ladies honestly in terms of responsibility my challenge especially over action is for brothers there are some of you looking at me right now you are growing older but your sense of responsibility is still at a zero level no action if at age 30 you are still calling home mom C, will you send me something pop C, will you send me something listen to me very carefully you are on your way to being an irresponsible husband irresponsible father you don't become responsible just because a ring entered your hand you must be a father first before you have children it is not children that make you a father it's from the word abba the consciousness to be a provider are we together you're a man here and you are not catering for your family they may not have the courage to tell you but i'm telling you now you are failing god in that family are we together I wish I had the opportunity to reach some of our loved ones. Let me tell them. It's a shame when a daughter, a son, turns to their father and say, Father, it's, it's time. I, I need to buy a shirt. And the man says, what will I do? Sir, I'm, a, I'm in final year. I need money for my project. Should I kill myself? I tell you the truth. That is irresponsibility to the core. What should that person do? You are simply saying, go and be a prostitute. I don't care. Action. Today we are here by the grace of God because of action. After you plan, you must act. When you fail, you stand up, re-strategize and move forward. Let them laugh at you. The ones who are laughing at you have not taken action. That's why. You see, let me tell you. Anybody they are not talking about is because he's not doing anything. It's not because they like you. It's because you have not done anything yet. The law of faith. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 8. Please give it to us. Every great man will tell you that he pursued the unknown. Every great man will tell you he took steps when there was no guarantee. It is usually when we see the results that we think the people had any guarantee. The Bible says, ask and it shall be given to you. It says, seek and seek although you have not found it seek it listen when i started doing something about my finances i didn't know how to move from point a to point b i started the journey to success understanding it in 2004 until then it was just gambling understanding but i made up my mind 2004 i said i would learn these systems i didn't know anything no opportunity for mentorship almost everybody around me was not really making it and i said no i have to learn i remember getting dr miles monroe's books and i started from there i didn't know but i began to seek listen let me tell you do not think knowledge will come and meet you and spoon feed you pursuit is the proof of passion you must be passionate enough to pursue it i watch people right now i don't know how many times seeking for uncommon mentors in the rain in the sun and little discomfort and he says, sorry uh, the way my hair is eh? every time i'm listening once there's heat it destroys me you are not and i let the ladies do it that's all right god created them that, that but you as a man i have headaches so i won't listen to the message <laughs> That means that Panadol is far from you because the grace and the resources to buy it will come through what enters your ears. Brother, say in the name of Jesus. I did shout it in the name of Jesus. From this night, I declare that the days of wishing are over. I take action now start that business go and submit your cv don't sit down tell yourself by september i should be walking that's faith by september i should be walking and see whether the god of all flesh will not make it happen lord i have failed but i'm starting again i i see the mistakes i made i don't have any capital now but lord i trust in you If you fall and remain there, then you have really failed. 
But if you fall and you still stand up, you have not failed. Are we together? Everybody say courage. Shout it, courage. There is nobody. I have watched people in this ministry rise up with no guarantee of anything. And today God has honored them. You must be courageous. Joshua was now going to be a leader over several people. Several people. God did not tell him, Joshua, make sure you eat well oh, so that you don't collapse. He said, be strong and of good courage. They will act like fools, but be strong. You are a leader. There is an anointing upon you. You watch what we do today by the grace of God and think one uncle just gave money or somebody said, I will give you venue or somebody said, no, nobody gives you any guarantee. Stop insulting your uncles, your aunties, your brothers and sisters and say, nobody is supporting me. Let your faith support you. Let your faith support you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let your faith support you. You had a dream and you saw yourself submitting a CV in Ibadan. Apostle, but I've never gone there. I'd like you to prepare and trust God for grace. Share the idea with two or three people. Carry your CV and go to the park in the night. You are in Kaduna Park. Where are you going? In Ibadan. And see whether God, tear your Bible if you go to Ibadan and God does not back you there. He's waiting for you in Ibadan. He's not waiting for you at the place of disobedience. As soon as you get to Ibadan, in the, in the luxurious that you enter, you will now meet somebody. Where are you going? So it's like I know you somewhere. Ah, your sister's graduation. I was a classmate. Really, where are you staying? The miracle starts. The Bible says, this sign shall follow. If you don't take steps, you will not see signs. Apostle, when will I enter? I, I mean, I need the healing anointing. Must you die before you know you fell under the anointing? You let sick people pass you. Somebody says, I have cancer. And you just say, ah, I remember this cancer is, can, can be transferred. You see, that attitude of unbelief, you will never walk in power. What do you think a miracle service is? A show? Nobody starts with mastery. You see how children walk? They start and then they start crawling. Do you stop them from crawling? Sometimes in a bid to hold the table, they hit their head. Does that mean walking is not possible? How? The child hits the head, you, you rub it. What do you tell the child? Sorry. Sorry means sorry for now. Continue. Move again. You love that child but you cannot walk for the child. The person who stops that child from walking is stopping him from becoming an adult. Are we together? I wrote jam five times. I didn't get it. I will give up. Are you joking? No. Look at jam and say, jam, as for me and you, one of us will give up. One of us will give up. I will walk you and weary you. Where will the money come from? Don't worry. Don't worry. God is alert and active watching over his word to perform it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Oh, apostle, I'm of age and I need to move from my parents' house now to get a place. But uncle did not send the money. Keep quiet. One day you get up and go and buy a bag with the 2,000 you have. Pack your clothes and say, Daddy, just like you advised me, I'm on my way going. I got one, one room somewhere and I'm going. He said, that one room, nothing. There's no carpet. You say, sir, if I don't leave, I will not become a man like you. If I don't leave, I will come. For as long as I come back and I can go to the kitchen, who had part of my yam? You are still a child. You need to push yourself and you stand up and while you are moving God is saying watch this the angels are backing you do not know all of a sudden the moment you get there some brothers from your fellowship will come and God will speak to somebody buy him a rock the first time you are experiencing miracles by yourself not in partnership with another person's faith your faith is growing and you begin to see that God is faithful for yourself ah, apostle I think I need a job before I move out of my father's house how was your father when he moved out of his own father's house? Very fearful people. 
very fearful people. Hallelujah. I teach responsibility, but you must conquer fear. You get out and you stay in that room. It's raining, and water is dropping on you from that one room. And you are just imagining the AC that is in your own house. Exactly. That's what made Moses a savior. Pushed him out. And as that rain is dropping, it drops and does something to your brain. And you say, no more. I can't live like this. I'm seeing the reality of irresponsibility glaring before me. The very next day, you will sell two clothes and buy one book. You are making progress. And sit down. You go and get financial dominion part one, two, three, and sit down. Next time you hear people are fasting, you don't say they are just. See, do you know why many of us don't take action? We have been reaping the harvest of many people's seeds. You think it's your faith that is working. The proof that your faith is working or not, leave all the support and stand alone. Then you will know whether you really have faith. Are we together? There are people who don't know how to trust God. There's this song in my heart. My trust is in you. You know the song? Sam, help me. Just that one song, one minute. I want you to sing that song because I believe God is speaking to somebody. You know the song I'm talking about? Lion of Judah. My trust is in you. I put them on you. Say. My trust is in you. Let this song I put them on you. you. Say. My trust is in you. Oh, and I am a Judah. My trust is in you. I want you to know that God is talking to you tonight. Take action. Brothers, shout, I take action. Say it again. Someone has got to push you. And some of our parents love us too much to push us. Oh, I'm a graduate. Go and open a barbing saloon. The money you have can buy three clippers. I open it in the name of Jesus. Package a little seed and come and drop it in corn. Not for me, it's a principle, you know it. Go and open the barbing saloon. Are we together? Yes. There are many lazy people moving around. You may not be a millionaire, but from that little God will honor you. Tell yourself, I cannot wait until the day somebody tips me. Everybody that passes you, you are waiting and hoping they drop something. When will you start blessing others? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. Can three people come and take action and say there is no ice cream making machine in Zaria? Three of us, let's come together. How much do you have? 500,000. How much do you have? 200,000. How much do you have? 100,000. Let's have an agreement. Let's get one of these shops and make one of the top ice cream machine machines around. You make it the first 20 people free. You launch it. Come and collect a bottle of oil here. Shekata. I will pray on it with all my heart. You drop it on that shop. It will be like jam. 
hold on don't shout you have never done it how many times have i spoken about it here listen listen action takers are the ones who move forward you graduated 10 years ago you submitted your cv twice and it's because they told you who do you want to spoon feed you with a job stand up and take action fail honorably and come i will hug you i will pray for you and you will go back you are learning how to walk you are learning how to walk everybody say i will rise again i'm speaking to people who tried rising and then you went down and christians are usually the ones who say take it is you take it is here this this decoration how many people get married in zaria you just went to go and spend two hundred thousand to go and buy all this look at the, how many ribbons you know you even say you want to do canopy you better don't destroy yourself and all of a sudden you see somebody will come and just when he's opening the canopy that's when god is bringing explosion to another church and they'll say you are the one who is supplying this look at those who supply canopies imagine if those who supply these canopies now are here in koinonia every week even if you don't do any other business again yet you are sitting down buying fake things fake whatever to prove levels that you have not gotten to challenge yourself the law of faith you must take action i have taken bold steps in my life bold steps in my life the word trust in the lord proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 is from the word bata it means throw yourself like you pick one of these are little ones you see how these my children come to greet me after service some of them just run and just fly and expect that i hold them if i don't hold them it's still me that will pay for it correct a child runs to the father you gave birth to me i didn't ask you i fly pick me that's what you do to god when you take action you put pressure on god's integrity lord you said this you said it is it is it is um what about any man that cannot cater for his family is worse than an infidel i'm a married man with three children lord i am tired of allowing waiting for my wife to come back with twenty thousand, and that's what we're all feeding from these children cannot go to school lord i receive grace to take action i will go and seek advice i will go and receive prayer i will receive an impartation but i will take action the anointing can come upon you but you must take action for it to work when did you ever lay hands on somebody to be healed oh let me run to prayer department benga or let me run to promise or oh, anybody let me run to any of the people oh let me run to this i think i'm hungry let me run to the welfare mama please ma you too you know the way nigeria is that if you, if you don't challenge yourself you will never rise you need to take action take action take action tell yourself no i'm going to be responsible lord i trust you lord i believe you there are many of us who have never sown a seed do you know why because of fear never sown it god cannot even tell you to empty your account yeah, 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 yeah. you will bind bind and cast and curse and say let this voice never speak to me again that's why you can never rise i'll never forget a time the lord gave me an instruction to sow everything over 80 percent of all my clothes aside from what i did in Port Harcourt, and i just carried those things when i sowed them it was as if i would die now i live if god tells me to empty my account and empty my life and everything i would do it gladly because i know him i know him not because i like it not because it's convenient when you know god then you'll be able to take certain steps are we together yes listen the workers in this ministry start dressing arranging chairs and canopies way before people come did anybody sign an agreement that by evening all the overflows will be full it takes faith we believe what god has said we believe that we are adding value and so in the morning people start preparing imagine that you wait until people come then you now say oh there are plenty of people today oh yeah let's go do you know that every space you give god is what he feels you have not taken action that's why your shop is still small and you are there God has been prompting your spirit move to a bigger one and say ah God don't mock me so you will never see the miracle the law of faith 
Hebrews chapter 6 verse 15. God is speaking to someone tonight. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 15. Ah, this thing I've shared it has fired my spirit. And so, everybody read. Talking about Abraham. Read on. And so, after he had patiently endured, did what? Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Over my destiny, my trust is in you. Help me, sir. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Sing that song with understanding. Put them on you. Say, my trust is in you. Ancient of days, my trust is in you. Oh, I am that I am. My trust is in you. Oh, I put them on you. Say, my trust is in you. I say, I put them on you. My trust is in you. It takes faith to begin to prepare for five children when you are not yet in a relationship. I'm preparing. Oh, I don't want to waste my time. Who will come and marry me? Let the guy come first. When he comes and I'm sure the day he ever says, I will go and see your parents. I will read like never before. You will never marry that way. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. Oh, five children are going to come out from this womb. You take a step of faith. You have not entered any relationship. Who knows me? Look at that foolish question. What do you mean who knows me? God? The God you serve? You lay your hands, shape. You are bringing five children from this womb and they will all be a blessing. No giving birth to armed robbers. No giving birth to terrorists. I will not give birth to a son who will kill me because of trouble. You are preparing. You go and buy a book in advance. The power of a praying wife. You go and buy a book. God tells you, you marry a man of God. You don't wait until a preacher comes. He may marry you as a civil servant and after five years, God calls him into ministry. God didn't lie, but you didn't prepare. God told you, you are going to be a millionaire and you are waiting and say, God, when you said I'm going to be a millionaire, my palm sanders, everything I have home and abroad is 10,000. I can sell all my clothes for 20,000. That's foolish thinking. You go and buy a book. Lord, you have called me into kingdom financing. You told me I'm going to mentor and raise a generation and bless people. You do it. You put pictures around. Put a picture on your laptop that represents your future. And every time you see it, you prophesy. I may be small now, but in the name of the Lord Jesus, I have no father, I have no support, but I'm coming. I'm coming. I trust the name of the Lord. I may be weak. I may not be able to explain to people I'm doing something. They may even say you are lazy. What are you always doing in a room? Why are you always sitting down and you say, I'm building my mind? They say, what is mine? Are we going to eat mine? Just continue. The day God honors you, then you will stand and sing this song that we are singing tonight. I believe that there is an anointing on this song this night. That people have to trust God. Take action. Trust God. It takes faith to be great. It takes faith to have a healing ministry. Nobody gives you a guarantee that anybody will be healed. It takes faith to be a man of God. It takes faith to be a businessman. It takes faith to be a wife and a mother. You are not allowed to have a child ordinarily before marriage. So how do you know you are fruitful? It takes faith. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. The ancient of days, my trust is in you. Oh, I am that I am. My trust is in you. My destiny, Lord, my trust is in you. There are people who will never build a house in their lives. Many of our fathers, their salaries were 150. Now they are retired. There is no house. You know why? Because of fear. I will build it one day. I don't have enough money. Then God granted you grace. They created one scheme in your job and gave everybody land. Four plots of land is more than enough to build a family house. Mostly, their wives will tell them, honey, build, build. 
time is going this how much is the money there's one money i'm expecting it will come tomorrow god said you have hundred thousand it can bring one tip of sand go and bring it and pour it on the side that's faith you are saying lord i'm starting this out the hand of zerubbabel that started when you start god begins to move people i remember the first day we bought equipment I remember one by one one by one I remember when I started buying you know not even just for ministry for myself to think and say one day I'll get a laptop is a joke a laptop who gives you the money see hear me this God is a good God worship team told us already this God is a faithful God but while you are waiting for him, I don't know who I'm speaking to this night. God is saying, I'm tired of waiting for you. Take a step. 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 Who told you the business will fail? Take a step. Are we together? Take a step. Ah, I have one million naira now. I'm thinking of starting small poultry. I'm thinking of getting a little golf. But I hear that this cars used to spoil a bee and that your profit doesn't come out. So you will remain there until the day somebody comes. Usually, those kind of people will sit down and then something will happen. You will carry 100,000 from it. Something will happen. They will invite you for one event that doesn't have head and tail. And they will massage your ego. And you will know when you carry 300,000. On behalf of me and my wife, I donate this money. And the money has finished. And you'll never be successful success systems the law of faith every great man walks on water every great man walks on water it is your faith that turns that water to concrete we are going to sing this song one more time and then i'll go to the next law but i want you to sing it with understanding i have trusted men they have failed me i have trusted systems i trusted my certificate it failed me lord i lift my eyes and i trust in you you are the one who can wipe my tears. My uncle promised me and disappointed me. Many have concluded that because I finished with the past, there is no greatness. That's what the devil wants to do all the time to make you not trust God. But I'm challenging men of faith. Lion of Judah, my trust is in you. Psalm 89 verse 17 the law of favor Lord I pray that somebody will get this in the name of Jesus I pray that somebody will get this Psalms 89 verse 17 for thou art the glory of their strength and in thy favor shall our horn be exalted favor is the number one reason people succeed favor is the number one reason 
the number one reason why you will succeed is favor. You need favor to achieve your goals and dreams. You need favor to achieve your goals and dreams. It is impossible to get to the place of destiny without favor. No, sir. You've heard people say that one day of favor is worth a lifetime of labor. It is hardly an exaggeration. One day of favor is worth a lifetime of labor. Many people do not have favor in their lives. Why? Because they are not taught what favor is and how to release favor in their lives. Those who are even taught favor are only taught one side of favor. And it's like whenever you say favor, we leave it unto God. God just favor us now. There is an exact equation that leads to favor. Favor is not a miracle. Write it down. Favor is a reaction. Favor is not a miracle. Favor is a reaction. You can program favor in your life. A reaction means that it is a response. Favor is a reaction. It's not a miracle. Favor miracles can happen and do happen. But favor is not a miracle. What is favor? Let's define favor. Favor is when someone is willing to invest their life, their time, their resources, their credibility to help you achieve your goals that's favor when somebody is willing to participate in your success it's called favor when someone is willing to invest their life invest their credibility invest their money invest their knowledge into you to help you achieve your goals it's called favor favor is not just unmerited access that's a very limited thinking, limited teaching, limited definition. And it's the reason why, let me tell you, whether it is merited or unmerited, favor is access. Calling it unmerited alone is very limited. Favor can be merited. Favor can be merited. Your obedience and understanding. The Bible says good understanding secures favor favor can be merited what is favor someone willing to sacrifice their resources to help you succeed all success are related to favor all success whether all kinds of success financial success ministry success business success marital success they are directly related to favor all success testimonies you want to write all success testimonies are related to favor i have heard so many success testimonies there is not one of them that is not related to favor there is a gap in that testimony all success testimonies are related to favor are you learning something write this down who likes you matters in your success who likes you matters in your success brothers and sisters one man called Ahasuerus hated one one woman and her entire life crumbled just because one person of influence hated her are we together the same man who hated one woman and destroyed her entire life turned and loved esther and her life changed overnight from a village girl to a queen who likes you matters 
now many christians think it doesn't matter i don't care who likes me or who doesn't like me if you are speaking in terms of dependence on god i understand that context but in terms of channels to release favor is a joke who likes you matters there are people listening to me from joss we came back from joss and um while i went to minister in joss you know part of the system of honor for me there was a little girl lovely lady and that they gave this thing they put on the neck and flower you know just to greet me and as soon as i got into the hotel there were people lined up and the little girl was standing and then you know would come you know recite i didn't even know what she was saying you know you are welcome to so -so and so and so and then put that thing and then gave me and i looked at the lady and i fell in love with that dear girl instantly and i told her i said do you know what you are my friend when i came on stage i made sure that they looked for her 10 years old and she stood because i liked her not because i know her i just liked her the next day i said they should bring her to the hotel we would drive together it was together i was gisting with her and i looked at the lady and i said i want to do something for you i want to do something for your family please bring your mother i want to see her now the rest is history but that little girl's life changed in two days simply because somebody liked her do not let anyone lie to you that who likes you does not matter i don't mean who wants to sleep with you who likes you likes you like from heaven likes you to change your life let me tell you the truth listen 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 take what i'm saying very seriously don't just laugh listen who hates you also matters when your boss hates you you will know that it matters because your life will be miserable you may be tongue talking but your boss hates you ah do you know this lady has been serving actively it's time to promote her i, I just hate her please another time and that another time is after three years but there's somebody they can like you as ah, has this person not been in this office for up to two years they say, yes sir. i thought it's three three years I, say, I changed the policy somebody like daniel and could not sleep in the night because some people manipulate a king stop sleep because he liked daniel early in the morning he got up by himself oh daniel has your god been able to deliver you daniel said i'm alive he said bring all those people daniel didn't say please can you help me punish these people the king said me bring them throw them kill all of them somebody because he likes you can fight your enemies for you enemies you don't have capacity to fight somebody can like you and put himself inside your situation what is going on here sir they want to collect our land our father is dead we are only two say no way i'm a lawyer come and meet me in my office i'm a lawyer i'm a senior advocate what did the person say because of that we will charge him to court he will not only return the land he will give you part of the money for the foundation i know what to do let's go and you are seated somewhere and you see people building a house you know nothing about because somebody liked you who likes you can change your life write this down one person can open a hundred doors of opportunities for you one person one man one person in your life showing you favor can open a hundred doors of opportunities first samuel 16 verse 22 please give it to us quickly first samuel 16 verse 22 jesus thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you and saul sent to jesse saying let david i pray thee stand before me why for he had found favor in my sight go and tell that boy's father bring me that smelly boy regardless of what it is let me tell you when you find favor before a man regardless of what your limitations are they are ignored to bless you you are responsible for activating the flow of favor in your life now this is coming as a shock to many of us write it down we're getting deeper now you are responsible for activating the flow of favor in your life if one day god will bless me it's a joke you are responsible 
for activating the flow of favor in your life the bible tells us in first samuel chapter 2 verse 26 that samuel grew in favor with god and with men first samuel chapter 2 verse 26 2 26 and the child samuel grew on and was in favor both with what the lord and also with men listen it is one thing to have favor with god it is an entirely different thing to have favor with men i know so many people who have favor with god but they don't have favor with men luke chapter 2 verse 52 same thing was said about jesus luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with god and with men a man can increase in favor with god and favor with men the number one reason for the hardship in people's lives is lack of favor lack of favor i have seen gifted people who don't have favor i have seen blessed people in terms of abilities i have seen gifted architects no door favor gifted engineers gifted doctors gifted students no favor i have seen gifted men have you seen men who are gifted they do work for you and you are like my god and you are at this level i know people who know everybody known yet there's no favor in their life you know that they know senate president they know one the chairman of their local government the governor's friend is their father's friend and they have they will show you the numbers of people if i show you look at this is saraki's number this is dogara's number in fact do you know that when i was staying in lagos there was a day that osimba Jo came to our house i know him oh, and there's no favor they watch everybody on tv ah that's ambassador abc you remember him now 1971 no favor no favor to be gifted is not enough you need favor you need men to partner with your life this ministry by the grace of god is rising not just in terms of finances because of favor favor my life today is is a humbling testimony of god's favor psalms 102 verse 13 psalms 102 verse 13 thou shall arise and have mercy upon joshua selman why for the time to favor him yea the set time there is a set time for favor and everyone prophesy to yourself say this is my set time say it again this is my set time turn it into a prayer in one minute lord this is my set time when promise came here he said pray tired of hardship hardship is different from poverty a hard life a life unassisted by men a life unassisted by helpers is a sign of lack of favor you can have money and not have favor when you pay for everything by yourself you don't have favor now is the time of God that you arise. The set time. The set time. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that from this night favor will begin to follow you? Yes. I don't share my testimonies. Do you know why? Because many people misunderstand my testimonies. When I share testimonies, most people not you but maybe most people will think it is um it is pride you are boasting what does he think he is if i share with you testimonies of these ministries what does he think he is but sometimes it's good to encourage people testimonies are ways that let people know god is at work but because we live in a cynical world every time you speak people think you are bragging listen let me tell you brothers and sisters god is my witness and ask everybody who is close to me 
I only fund less than 20% of my life ex expenditure. Everything, almost everything in my life is paid for by men. Everything. Everything. Now, you can have the money to pay for it by yourself. We are not the same. You are not assisted. Are we together? Most people think having money is all there is to favor. No. The ability to have men stand up and say, promise, I am determined to make you succeed. If you don't believe that thing, there's no need for a comment for Koinonia this night. I looked at certain things in the body of Christ and I looked at certain men. I looked at certain ministries and I saw tearsome testimonies of favor their life revolved as they wanted it was as if there was a charm anyone who saw them blessed them one of the greatest people let me tell you i am convinced i received the impartation of favor directly from dr mike modok i knew when it came upon my life you know why He's a man that is greatly criticized in the body of Christ because of seed, seed, seed and all of that. I may not necessarily believe everything, but I saw uncommon favor. Uncommon, a favor like a charm. And while others were grumbling, I said, Lord, this man is an apostle of wisdom. He is the gift of God to the body. He represents the spiritual system that controls wisdom. And the Bible says, with me, wisdom now are riches wealth and honor durable riches and righteousness he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice and i said lord this thing must happen in my life at that time you don't ever see somebody say god said i should do this god said i used to think those things were just stories you know when i think about my life today i almost want to shed tears you know why because I am a product I am if you are ever looking for a man who answers that name Ebenezer that a man that God has helped God lifted your hands that's why when I worship God I I, I, I do it I live a very happy and a very peaceful life because I found the key to God's favor there is no time in my life when I lack men to rise and assist and defend this ministry you see we are not just fearfully blessed just because of tithes and offerings the ministry of men strange dimensions of favor that I begin to share with you many of you will be afraid how do they get money we are not herbalists favor when you access these laws it will change you overnight together I'm wetting your appetite and then I'm going to teach you quickly while I begin to teach them just bring the vessels and then we pour the oil because what is coming upon you tonight is the grace for favor I want you to believe it there is such an impartation upon a man for favor father please let your people believe you please please let your people believe you if you don't believe this you will pay for it i promise you there are times for months months i never go to the atm i even forget that i have an atm there is no 24 hours no 24 hours that somebody does not bless me no 24 hours i can give you my phone now and you can check from when i sat down till now a lot upon a lot how they got my account number i don't know brothers and sisters there are properties that have been given to me today i don't know where it is i've not gone there to see it do you believe in favor I shared with you last year about the gold mine 18.7 hectares of a gold mine 
given for nothing. Three kings came together and said, we must make sure he has it. It is not by might. It is not by power. Are we together? There are tailors that sew my clothes aside from one. I have never, aside from another again, two really. One, a cousin to Reverend George Adeboe of Rema. He may even be listening now with his wife. Every time I travel to Lagos to a particular church for meeting, there he comes with his wife. Materials upon materials. Favor. There are bags full of gifts I have not opened since they came. I don't even know what is there. Who told you favor does not work? There are mysterious people who have sent alerts in millions to this ministry. Nobody knows who they are. They didn't even call to say, I am so, 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 and so. What makes you think there is no favor?
way you can succeed and accelerate your life. Any other thing you will cry and weep and hate people. That's why we cannot give. Because after sweating so much for 50,000, will you really be able to give it? Are we blessed? Testimonies. There is no place and there is no day that I wake up. I wake up every day. May God forgive me if I'm lying. There is no day I don't wake up in the morning with text messages, with recharge cards and bank alert every day, including today, without fail. This is how I live. Because I found from scripture that he daily loads us with benefits. Sometimes I can be sitting down and see a conga van. You ask the boys that work for me. A conga van, bam, just stops. Somebody has ordered something and paid for it. Put my address. And they are offloading these things. And I'm saying, God, what is this? What are you doing to me? And God says, no, you can stop it. You can stop it if you want. I'm waiting your appetite to activate this key. Do you really think you can live a joyful life? When you sit down, you really think your salary is what is going to bless you? To be established? Who lied to you? There is a realm of favor. Are we together? I've shared with you the testimony of this ministry. Where a woman, after a program in Lagos, the woman just came, knelt down in front of me and looked at me and said, please, the Lord led her to give us a land and gave us a land in Lekki. It's still there. I've not been there in years to see it. People have called me and said they gave me a land allocated to sell. Man of God, on behalf of our business, we put A, B, C, D portion. This is for you. And I'm saying, God, what is this? They gave us an assignment to develop maybe a 40, 50 estates. You know, houses and all of that. A man of God, just to let you know that we have three or four units as our own commission. And when we are done, one of the units is yours. And I'm saying, what is this? you see why I don't share my testimonies because it makes people angry and when it makes people angry they hate most people sit down and say preachers carry people's money tithes and offerings how much how much access access are we together now on, on Tuesday, we are going to Kano tomorrow. And on Tuesday, we are going to Nigerian Immigration Services. Their headquarters. Where the top leaders of Nigerian immigration across the whole nation. I have been with them for how many years now? I think about four, four years. We go there every year. I talk to them. I counsel them. The top of the top leaders. You don't even enter their office. Yet for them, it's a privilege. Well done, sir. Well done, sir. That's favor. Listen, listen. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised favors. Favor. Favor is not just money. Men are rising to assist you to succeed. After my meeting in Joss, I had a little session for a school of ministry in Joss. And when I was done, a lady walked up and gave me something and said, Please go and give your mother. I said, Hi, this thing is still working. I just met my mother. I said, I met a lady. I don't even know who she is. She said, I should give you. And my mother said, this is what I prayed for. I was ten. I think it was um, a big letter of crayfish. And she said, I should go and give my mother. It is difficult to glorify God when you kill yourself producing the result. There is like Bishop Oyedeko called sweatless triumph. There is such a possibility. If you don't believe it, choose your destiny. But as for me, I have decided that hardship will not age me. I will not sit down and be, I will never come and manipulate you and deceive you. All of you sold to 2,000 Naira so that I can have food to eat. Not when there is a God in heaven. How to activate favor? What is the mystery that controls this thing? Favor is not just unmerited access. What is the key? The first key to activating favor 
is sowing the seed of honor the first key to activating favor in your life is sowing the seed of honor write it down honor is the first key sowing the seed not receiving a harvest of honor you must sow the seed for honor because honor is the key for access when you sow seeds of honor you begin to activate favor what is honor the ability to recognize the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their uniqueness that's honor not just the ability to appreciate it in your heart the ability to recognize the ability to celebrate and the ability to reward men for their honor the seed of honor i don't mean money a seed called honor you sow honor into a man's life there are many people who will never rise in life because of this honor no favor in their life they don't know the difference between a great man and a weak man everybody is the same to them all men are equal and hey, please i don't do all of this no honor many of you don't know why we sow seeds of honor we transport you after koinonia do you know why it's a seed of honor we are programming honor upon the ministry it's not just that we have a lot of money when our elderly people come we don't let them join the queue except they want to they sit down it's a seed of honor when i hug our children here it's a seed of honor my life is a walking seed of honor i have mastered sowing seeds of honor the first key to command on ending favor honor honor through conversations honor through your body language honor through your vest your gestures you see an elderly woman and i greet her mama how are you that's the seed of honor oh she cannot speak english no problem mama don't put yourself under pressure you don't have to know english find an interpreter seeds of honor are we together now yes i sow seeds of honor everywhere once you discern difference you sow that seed of honor that you are close to an environment of honor does not mean you will have it you must sow seeds of honor to parents the entire hamper that was given to me while i was in joss they already know i carried it with the wine and everything and i took it home as i got home i just dropped it when my mother heard i was coming to joss she said what do i want i said i'm not sure and she should not do anything my mother refused and said she must do something she made chin chin and made chicken that's my mother but she has discerned that this is not only my son this is a man of god seeds of honor that's why honor keeps coming honor is not coming because she's my mother she's walking these principles let me tell you whoever walks it will receive it bad manners being rude dishonor you are driving favor from your life you don't treat people well you treat everybody like a piece of rag there are men of god who favor stopped in their life when they rose because they have no regard for anybody they receive honor from others but they don't give honor so those lower than them let me tell you the mystery behind stagnation of favor for many men they keep receiving honor those lower than you keep honoring you but then you yourself don't give honor so you remain there and all of them rise and catch up with your level and even go higher than you then you start saying you people are competing with me abi there's no such thing you refuse to rise because you too are supposed to be rising they are sowing seeds of honor if you keep sowing seeds to me in koinonia whether money or whether whatever and i don't do the same thing you need to see me when i stand before greatness you will not know it's the same apostle joshua selman you're talking about if it means me cleaning the shoes i do it with jesus joy honor it's a big secret many of us do not know honor honor i honor the holy spirit with my life i don't just serve him i don't just use him for anointing koinonia honors the holy spirit that's why you see all kinds of signs and wonders we don't ignore his presence it doesn't matter what we are teaching as the worship team whatever happens the holy spirit has unrestrained honor in this ministry that's why we keep seeing signs and wonders that's why we keep seeing him lifting us 
from place to place every church I have gone to I have honored them honor them not in terms of money necessarily but honor them in terms of treating them well I don't climb anybody's pulpit and violate their doctrinal beliefs regardless of what it is I manage whatever it is they believe and I preach well if their pulpit if it's a church that they are not allowed to jump around and move and stand in one place I stand in one place because it is honor and at the end of it they say wow we found a young man who is anointed there are churches i preach you never hear me pray in tongues once it doesn't mean i don't they do not allow that in the open and then i, I subscribe honor are we together i'm showing you success systems these are the mysteries that people have engaged that has changed their lives honor you must sow seeds of honor Number two, how do I activate favor consistently? Not today up and tomorrow down. Two, value. We've spoken about it. You activate favor in your life when you solve people's problems. When your life is committed to solving people's problems, providing valuable solutions to them, it's drizzling outside. Please coordinate them. If some of them can come in, let's, let's just come in. Or they, sh they can get into the, the, um, the canopies. Thank you so much. Some of them who can come in, you can bring them in. But most of them can go to the canopies. God bless you and thank you. Hallelujah. Solving problems. We are blessed as a ministry because we solve problems. As I'm teaching now, I'm adding value to you. Is that true? I'm adding value. Listen, let me tell you something. Your, when you start solving people's problems, you should do honor. Thank you, sir. There are people I've never seen who call me, man of God, I just listened to your message, essentials for a glorious relationship. You just saved our marriage. Here is a little seed. Man of God, I just listened to your message, financial dominion. Man of God, I just listened to your message, why revivals die. Solving problems. The moment you solve problems, you show honor. And everywhere there is honor, I teach that there is favor. And everywhere there is favor, there are all kinds of rewards, including finances. So the more valuable you become in solving people's problems, Joseph scheduled the season of favor for himself because he was in the prison and he noticed that the prisoners were not laughing. Dr. Mike Wendo calls wisdom the ability to discern difference. And he saw that their countenance, something was wrong. And he asked them, what is wrong? They were not the ones who came and told him the dream. He said, what is wrong? And he said, ah, okay, you have asked, let me tell you. This is what happened. And he interpreted the dreams and it happened. Value. You must begin to solve people's problems. They will love you. They will honor you. You must cry to God for grace to be a problem solver. You are either creating problems or solving them. You are either creating problems or solving them. If some of these chairs are free, please let, let's not have people stand. They can occupy the chairs. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Number three. The third key to commanding favor in your life is integrity. The third key to activating favor in your life is integrity. Integrity. Very, very important. What is integrity? It comes from the word integer. Sameness. Consistency. Let me tell you something. You're a man of God here. Listen to me. Before people begin to bless you, and so into your church or your ministry they will probe your life don't think because you just started ministry people will bless you they will probe your life they will hear testimonies of changed lives and want to watch whether he's like one of them after a life a season of integrity and consistency then they conclude you know let me tell you something hold on many people think that the moment you are anointed you are charismatic 
people will just be loyal to you like that it's a dream there are many anointed people who have attention but no loyalty do you know why because people must vet your life and find out that you are worthy of their loyalty nobody will be loyal to you like that parents will not just ask their children oh i don't have a problem with you loving this man of god give people a chance to probe your life and clear their doubts then they will honor you are we together when we started out in this ministry most people thought that you know we're just joking most people thought it was all this young people's thing and for 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 years most people thought i was on serious it's just all these young guys doing things on campus it's just these people trying to do something but eventually i never was angry with them because every great man must be probed same people should not probe you is a joke they check your character with ladies they check your character with money they check your character with discipline they see how you manage challenges they see a lot of it is based on that they will say kai this man is worth my commitment we have seen that god brought two naira to his hand and that two naira did not change him he did not stop preaching the truth just because he's looking for food to eat this is a consistent man this man will be my pastor there are many people roaming around calling everybody son calling everybody daughter what investment have you made in their life you must allow people probe you you start a business and they suspect whether your product there are people when i started out because of the dimension of the anointing in my life many people thought you know you know anytime you see somebody walking in unusual levels of the anointing you may think that maybe some kind of charm or whatever it is and i used to hear people say it and i say leave them even me if i attended koinonia and i watched a man called joshua selma i would think he's holding a charm and then you watch there are many people some of you seated today years ago you would be the last person to be here because you had your differences some of you argued it but with time now you are some of the strongest people do you know there are people in many nations of the world and their assignment is to take koinonia messages there are whole churches that sit down and what they use for either evening service or midweek service is a koinonia message and they just sit down there are youth groups youth fellowships around you know why because they took out time to probe you and when they see integrity the ability to be unbending regardless of the situations there are men of god who start teaching and say don't manipulate money from people but the day they have needs as a ministry they start bending to that standards are we together yes once people see integrity and consistency then they make up their minds to listen to anything you say listen let people probe you until they find a reason to believe you never stop anybody listen if there is anything you are unsure of about my life and this ministry you have a right to sit down and clear your conviction so that you are confident are we together many of you get angry when people suspect you <laughs> how come pastor alpha i've been watching him the way he has been rising in the last three months this guy may have taught something Abba, am i not innocent let people probe you all, so that when they believe you they will be the greatest defense i know you there are people to do it they are the ones who are defending this ministry ah no i used to know this brother there was a day he gave me 50 naira he started his giving sins do you know the people who accuse you today will be the ones to defend you tomorrow give them a chance to have a testimony by themselves there are people who think the miracles that we announce here are manipulated or faked simply because they've heard that maybe some churches do a lot of things and they come here and then the person who falls under the anointing is seated close to them they watch it with their own eyes and then eventually their own sicknesses leave and they go back and said wow i have seen for myself integrity the third key to activating favor consistency integrity unbending unbending consistently producing results when we started the school of ministry this is the fifth set now when we started the school of ministry most people thought it was a joke let me tell you something look up please as a man of god let me give you a great advice the moment you are doing too many things and you cannot continue in them men will stop believing you 
you just get up today and says we have 14 days of fire vigil and then after 12 days a kite we found out that things are happening we are not doing this again there are too many inconsistent people we are going to start koinonia business school and after two weeks nobody comes then you close it when people probe you and they see that you are too erratic you know what it means to be erratic you just come up with programs there's no consistency nobody will submit to such an authority people want to see consistency they want to know that this is who you are they want to know that you can be predictable you never hear anybody come and give testimony here i don't care whether you're a millionaire or whatever i have never gone to the house of anybody in the name of going there to find out and say okay we are some of our top uh, offering givers and tight payers in koinonia i love you so much and uh, i just wanted you to know that we have the following needs no if i've ever come to your house to tell you we have the following needs stand up hallelujah how many men of god have destroyed integrity from their lives they go around harassing church members and look at people and say uh we don't know if god is speaking to you there's a drum set the thing has turned honestly it's embarrassing and you inconvenience people everywhere integrity please bring bring the, the containers now number four the third the fourth key to activating favor is quality relationships quality relationships favor is relationship dependent that's why i taught you those other laws quality relationship who you know matters it gives you access men can be wings to you men can become wings to you there are people we know today that can speak for us there are people i know today that can speak for me are we together they can make ex exemptions for you you sow seeds of favor seeds of favor and it changes your life forever relationships number five the third key to activating favor is praying favor provoking prayers there are favor provoking prayers the bible says for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone that asketh lord open my heavens cause men to bless me put an anointing upon my life that makes men bless me favor provoking prayers you can pray your way among other things into favor favor provoking prayers many of us don't pray i pray it seriously lord this ministry is a well watered garden people are coming givers are coming my life is a good soil People are sowing into my life as they sow into my life they receive a hundredfold harvest when you sow into a man's life and you receive a harvest nobody will tell you to do it again you will continue doing it again and again and again they sow into your life and nothing happens these are the seeds that you sow and then number six the sixth way of provoking or activating favor in your life is by an impartation from the careers of that anointing an impartation of the grace for favor an impartation of the grace for favor from the careers of the anointing this oil is not what anoints you this oil is simply oil when the oil is anointed then it becomes a medium to bless you the oil in itself has to be anointed this is not anointing oil this is oil after the prayers on it it becomes an anointing oil and it can bless you can favor be transferred can that grace the mantle the grace for favor be transferred absolutely there are people in this ministry that are carrying it bodily there are people who have begun to see it in their lives like day and night people call me all the time and say my god apostle this thing works like charm and tonight it will come upon your life what does favor give you in life speed speed 
what are the benefits of activating favor speed speed something that would take men 10 years can be achieved in three months under an atmosphere of favor What are the benefits of favor? Number two, ease. Ease. The mystery of ease. People like Bishop Oyedeko would call it sweatless triumph. Ease. Where the lines just fall for you in pleasant places and you have a good heritage. Battles that stand before you. While you are preparing to fight them, you open the door and find dead bodies. Favor fought your battles. Favor has fought my battles in life. I have seen ah, for the things you have done and the battles you have won. Only you are worthy of my praise. We magnify your name. Koinonia, look at this. We are in Zaria in the north. This whole road. This is a major road, but this whole road is blocked every Friday. Every Friday. Go and try to block a road somewhere in the name of service and see what happens to you. Everything works for our favor in this ministry. Everything, regardless of what it is. You try to fight this ministry, you will watch by yourself activating favor and making it happen. You don't fight a man of favor and win. It's a waste of time. It's like boxing in war. Where a man that carries the mantle of favor is untouchable. Literally untouchable. Because God will raise help left, right and center. Left, right and center. Left, right and center. Many of our parents have no favor. No doors opening for them. Nothing happening. Favor. Koinonia today is a place of favor. 70% of the people who are blessed by this ministry have never seen me. How do you follow a man when the videos are not even uploaded on YouTube? They don't know the picture. The first and only time certain people have seen me is dreams. Yet you listen to the message, it forces you to look for someone and give him. Whether you like it or not. That's not normal. There are people following scattered across different nations this night. Favor has brought me honor. Favor has brought me glory. I have stood before politicians. I have stood before kings. I have stood before billionaires. I have drunk of their minds and their wisdom for free. Men have given me access, uncommon access, uncommon doors. It still happens all the time and it will not fail. There are people who send me text messages every time. Apostle, is there anything we can do for you? We want to do for you. I don't know how many people in this ministry send text messages every time. We want to wash your car. We want to do something. Somebody came early in the morning. I was sleeping and I had, it, it was like there was water splashing on my car. And I checked and I saw somebody washing my car by force i know if i ask you you won't agree i said what is this one honestly they even disturb it just washing the car with joy i said now if i drive this person favor favor it is real and it happens we have sown seeds of favor we meet the security people we honor them we bless them the, the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers. They come here, some, I'm sure many of them are outside here with the buses and they are waiting. 99% of them are not necessarily Christians. But they love Koinonia and they will come and wait and watch the service and watch everything happening. No complaint. You know why? Because seeds of honor have been sown. Seeds of honor has been sown. There are so many people we have scattered seeds of honor around. Look at CGC and the honor that they have shown this ministry. 
I have never seen a ministry with men of God as humble and members that love Jesus and truthfully like the members in this church. See, you see, it is true. It is true. It is from my heart and it is true. Hallelujah. Some of the pastors are my fathers and literally those men can see me and just greet like this. And I'm wise enough to know that whilst they are sowing seeds of honor, I must sow seeds of honor. Every time people sow seeds of honor, sow it back. Don't receive and wait. You receive, they have risen, but you have remained where you are. They will be calling you a superstar, but it will be for a short time until they catch up with you. Somebody blesses you. Ah, um, Pastor Alpha, bless you. You reciprocate back. That way both of you have risen. We sow into the lives of mission agencies because we honor what they represent. That's why souls continue to be saved here. David Ibiu may the Lord ask him to go and meet Billy Graham before he dies. And David Ibiu may travel to America, carried a very huge seed, sowed into the life of Billy Graham. And Billy Graham said a word of prayer for him. He said he came back and preached a very simple message. And about one third of the church came out for altar call. He carried something. Whenever you see consistency, there is something. Tonight, you're about to receive an impartation. This may be one of the most important days in your life. Some of you have never had a man of God impart anything upon you. You have gone for anointing services. Some of you have all kinds of oils in your house. Oil does not anoint. The oil is anointed to anoint. My prayer is that there will be a replication of results. This is my prayer. And I, don't, I know that not everybody will believe it. But brothers and sisters, if you believe this, God has given me honor. God has given me honor. Honor beyond my level in life. Everything connected to me has flourished. God has blessed me. He has done all kinds of things. While you are seated, everyone, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, this is the moment. I'm ready to succeed. I am tired of failing. I am tired of hardship. Pray. You have taken all my shame. You've taken all my tears. You've taken all my cries. You've taken all disappointments. You've taken all my pain. You've taken all my shame. And you have made them yours. My heart prays to the King. Lord, you have taken all my sorrow.
must change this night. I insist. Lift your voice and pray.
Be careful, put it. There is a heavy anointing on these oils. Heavy unction of the spirit. Heavy anointing. I want to pray. Now, this is how we're going to do it. Listen, there are there's this is the main ball. There's overflow one, there's overflow two, the road, there's ever overflow three. Now, the way we are going to do it, I'm going to I'm going to lay my hands as I speak now. There will be people standing. Please, it takes a lot of time. We will be fast. Many of you will not be able to stand. I don't know how we'll manage this. The moment this oil touches your head and you receive it, begin to prophesy. Command things to hear your voice and command them to produce for you. Don't just have the oil and sit down and you are watching. Are we together? And then we are going to round the Father. In the name of Jesus, you have anointed me, you have shown me favor. You have granted me access to mysteries. And Lord, I decree and declare, this oil is about coming upon the life of your people. In the name of Jesus, Lord, everyone, please help me with the mic. Every single person who partakes of this impartation Lord may everything around them turn around may everything around them turn around miracle jobs by this favor turn around miracles by this favor in the name of Jesus let hopeless situations change. Let hopeless situations change. Let the barren receive twins, triplets. Lord, in one month, may men become millionaires. I say it again. In one month, may people who don't have anything in their pocket now, let it be a testimony that will shock everyone. May businesses arise from nowhere. Let there be people here that will start paying the school fees of several children because of how blessed they will be. I decree and declare, while this is an oil of favor, I call it the oil of judgment. As this oil comes on your head, I declare that because of what is on your head, someone must be laid to rest to let you go. Listen, uncompleted projects, whether academics, whether whatever, as this oil comes, the grace for completion comes with it. Hear me? Anyone here struggling financially, Except it is not the hand of God that is upon my life. I decree and declare that as this oil comes upon you, in ways that even you, you cannot explain, God will change your stories and wipe your tears. I provoke the grace, the anointing. Let everyone who makes contact with this oil, some of you, as soon as it touches you, you will see your phones ringing, miracles, text messages, in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have been looking for that did not come, let it come right now, in Jesus' name. If there is anybody who is in any kind of trouble now, trouble that only God can help you, I speak to you. By this favor that has come upon you, I turn things around. In the name of Jesus Christ. I turn things around in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you all the praise. You will never be the same. In the name of Jesus. Keep standing everyone. Please keep standing very quickly. This is past 10. We are very late. Our time is up. But I know that you will agree with me that it was worth it. Please keep standing. I want to give just a minute for people to rededicate their lives to Jesus. I know we have received this impartation. Our time is gone. But if you are coming out, please, I want you to make it fast. There are people here tonight 
who are saying, Lord Jesus, I want to, I make up my mind to walk with you. And others saying, Lord Jesus, I handed my life to you, but something happened here and there. And now I cannot say I'm standing in you. There are some of them inside here looking at me, many outside. Some of you are coming for the first time. Wherever you are, I want to give you an opportunity now. Please make your way to the front. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Clap for them as they come. God bless you. God bless you, madam. Bless you. You are on a crutch. God bless you. I'm going to pray for you. God bless you. Let them come quickly. Clear the way for them. They are running. They are coming. Run to Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, are you clapping for them? Encourage them. Please don't sit back. I want to run to Jesus. Hallelujah. If you are joining them, join them fast. Our time is gone. Our time is gone. Join them fast. Lift your right hand. I want to pray with you. That's all right, everyone. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that tonight, Jesus is my Lord. Say after me, Jesus, I believe in you. I hand over my life to you. I declare that the greatness you have destined for me, I must leave it. I ask that my sins be forgiven. I ask that you give me a new beginning. I am your child from today. I receive your life forward ever and backward never. Keep your hands lifted. Father, I present to you this that Jesus died for. They have made a decision to love you, to serve you. I pray that you seal this decision with the presence of the Holy Spirit. I declare that your sins are forgiven. The Lord gives you a new beginning from tonight. You will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please make sure someone prays with that lady. She came when the prayer was on. Pastor Femi, you can just pray with her. Now, please follow. There's a lady waving her hands. There's another gentleman waving their hands. Quickly go to them. They will direct you. Have your details and congratulate you on, your, on our behalf. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Katabranda Katekos. Katebranda Kataba Kotosko to break a take and the The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.